So here we are again. Um, welcome to another episode of Voices from the Spurns. Our guest coming right up is Tony Scullion, a um, highly decorated uh, GEA great, a uh, dual player both in Hurling and Gaelic. It's great to have Tony in today to tell us a bit about his career and growing up in Ballinus Green. This podcast is sponsored by the Arts Council of Northern Ireland through the REAP programme, uh, looking at rural arts and uh, what's going on in rural areas uh, throughout uh, Northern Ireland. Uh, hope you enjoy it. Some interesting points brought up by Tony, so check us out on YouTube uh, and all the different platforms for other podcasts we've done from Voices in the Spurns and the Small But Massive podcast. So thank you very much. Good people. Enjoy. <laughs> Headphones. You look well on the memory, I should have said. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, you, well, know, you know what? We feel like we can't plug another wee show, can't we? Not that's down uh, just down below us, uh, down in Dublin. But here we are with the Paddy and Tony show, all the GA local news, everything you wanted to know about the GA. You're you get all it here. welcome. You get it you here, get Paddy. It here. Tony and Pete, TP were called. We're like a country <laughs> and western band. So, Tony, you're welcome to Voices from the Spurns. It's great to have you here. I have known you a long time and You've been a bit of an inspiration to me growing up when I was younger and the likes of the Hurling Field and, and Gaelic and everybody knows all that about you. But I suppose hearing the voices of Spurns, it's about, as the people we've chatted to have chatted you downstairs about some of the people and it was all about community and uh, growing up and uh, where they were at, how they got to where they were at and where they ended up and where they're at still now, if you know what I mean, and their lives still continuing on. Because I know that for people out there, that know Tony Scullion, the tiger. I wonder where that tiger butt came from. What did, how did that come about? Just, just <laughs> you know, people don't know out there. They're singing, Tony's a complete gentleman, a tiger. <laughs> so how did that happen? <laughs> you know, that's funny. I'm not sure myself. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure uh, the name was put on me, maybe, as I say, in a, on a Gaelic football field one day, and it sticks by you, you know what I mean? Uh, and, and, you know, it's just maybe somebody made a comment one day, and it says, Tony the tiger, uh, and that, that stood with me for Well, you know, like the tiger's... For all those people out there, when the ball came towards you, you were, you punched, you got uh, it. Nine times out of ten, maybe 11 out of ten uh, times you would have got it. So you had that sort of instinct. Uh, so for people out there, Tony, they know you, for, I suppose, in the GA world. But for other people that are listening into this in the future and maybe uh, listening in now that may not know everything about uh, the great Tony Scullion, um, would you like to tell the people where you were born uh, in this great parish of Balnus Green uh, slash Drooperstown? I Paddy, I was born in a wee town land called Carnamone. Um If anybody is not so sure, it's you, you go down the five mile street, and it's uh, on the right hand side. You go down that down that down that road a couple of miles. It's toward it's down the right hand side. So it's a it's a very rural part of the parish. Uh, I always say. I'm proud to come from the Russians. And, uh, <laughs> you said that to me downstairs. I thought you said I'm proud to be Russian. Two different things, buddy. <laughs> Two different things. But there is a war in the Five Mile Street. <laughs> <laughs> the Russians, anybody that doesn't know Russians, Russians are, so, uh, are, are long, green, thin things that if you were looking after your land, maybe they shouldn't be growing on your uh, land. I, I, but we, we had, we had Russians. We had some of our land, there was Russians on it. So, uh, uh, as I say, them were the great days, you know, as to say back then um, as I say it's a very rural part of the parish uh, go, you know it's three miles from the town here yeah. um, and uh, and them days early days there was no very little transport it was maybe a bicycle or walk to the town well everybody would have known the person that had the transport wouldn't it Tony who was the person out in your place and who was the taxi man that didn't declare to the <laughs> tax man I'm a taxi do you, man do you, do you know this Paddy um, my uncles um uh, Anthony and John Dugan, uh, two men who never married, they lived at the top of our lane. And they, Anthony had a wee car. John there didn't go. drive, there but go. Anthony had a wee car. Yeah. And any time we were maybe looking uh, a run to the town or whatever, <laughs> we'd run up to the t top of the lane. It would have been tacked nice to Anthony if I could. <laughs> and there was days he took us in, there was days we had a walk. So that was it. So <laughs> there, was, there was very but, few cars back in the But there times. was always somebody, uh, I suppose, Tony, within the community that had the transport that was happy to take people on, into the town I, and get in and see what the, what was what was it like for for you, I suppose, um, growing up, going into the town at that age, what age would you have been when the first big time you would have hit the town, or was it to come uh, in? You know, that's, uh, that's, a, that's a great question, uh, because uh, the grocery van would have come to the, uh, would have come to the house back yeah. then. 
And well, who would that have been? John McCauley? No, back no, in the day, no. No, it wasn't John McCauley. You have a, I think it was... No, that's a good one. Uh, was it Mickey Grugan from Dungiven? Or, I'm not sure he was from Dungiven at the time. He would have come round, and I can't remember. There was another bread man come round too. But as I say, a lot of the groceries come to the house. We didn't get to the town too often. My mother, any time she went to the town, it was on a bicycle uh, to get a, a bit of groceries. But, you know... Uh, for for me, uh, Dean McGlinchey Park is four miles away, uh, you know, from the uh, house. Uh, so uh, when you talk about transport, um, and I'll, I always mention that, the, the Gurgans lived two field lengths away from us. Uh, but as a crow flies, but if you went by the road, it was maybe, it was maybe uh, over half a mile or three quarters of a mile. But Seamus, God rest him, was, yeah. was big into the J, like the rest of the Grugans. They were a big J family. But Seamus was over there on the 14 team and he come looking for my older brother, John. Mm. And I tortured him that much that he told me to jump into the car shopper. <laughs> and they were, you were hanging <laughs> what out. What age you there, Tony? I was about 11. Uh, yeah. and, and that's, but my father had taken me maybe to Dean McClinchy Park and the bar, the bar of a Black Maria Biscuit to see Derry play. Uh, before he took on well, but uh, in my younger days, he had to tuck us to Dean McGlinchey Park. Uh-huh. Would have been the first ones in Dean McGlinchey Park. He was a wild man for time, uh-huh. been there in time. Yeah. And and Derry back in the seventies had a great team, yeah. a great team. And, and who, was, who who like for people out there, um, who would have been playing in the Derry team at that well, time? Well, you know, Tony? around here, you know, you had you had Matt Throne. Yeah, Matt, Matt. Throne was Matt Throne was a great cornerback. Uh, Brenton Kelly. Brent Nilly. Brent Nilly. Oh, top. Yeah. W- yeah. Top, one of the. Skillful. You know, really oh, skillful. He had a dummy. He, Brenton could have pulled the ball in. And no matter how many times he'd done it, the next day he went out, everybody knew his dummy. <laughs> but nobody could ever <laughs> get the dummy. Nobody could, nobody could suss him out. <laughs> and, he, uh, and I'm going to miss out somebody here because, you know, but I have mentioned these men anyway, right. especially. Right. But, but If anybody comes up, you find uh, Brent them. Brenton Nilly and Matt Throne, they yeah. were playing the 70s. Well, and Tommy the McKenna. Would, Tommy McKenna would have been captain of the Ball the Screen yeah. team that won the senior championship yeah. in 1973. Yeah. And we haven't won a championship, a senior championship since that. Uh, and Tommy was, Tommy was a centre half back, uh, was a centre half, a wing half back, but he was the captain of the team. There you go. I there know. You go. And I talked about the Grugan say uh, Brian Grugan was in that team, maybe number six. There you uh, are. Uh, that was a great ball on the screen team. I can mind vividly, vividly remember that I'm telling my age here now. Uh, you're all right. But uh uh I was I was eleven years age and I could vividly been at the match and mind Shimmy McKee. Uh the ball came in a, a long ball came came in from midfield and the goalie the blind goalkeeper and Shimmy McKee came for it and Shimmy got a flick over the goalie's head and put the ball into the net to win us the senior challenge. And and as I say uh, that was great. And Did you all break the fence and go right ah, well, was uh, up I days? wasn't big enough to break the uh-huh. fence back. <laughs> <laughs> the, the fence would have broke Years me. later, that fence would have went uh, down, I could tell you, your uh, shoulder. Them was, no, no, them, them was, them was, that was, I can mean that, as, as I say, and I mean going to watch Derry, the great, the, the great Derry team back then, even though they, they deserved to have more success than they really had that team. And, um, that would them that that team would have inspired you to play the games, you know. Uh, you felt it that time. It was like something. Ah, uh, it's yet. something. It's something. As I say, you know, you know, back then, in them early days, Grugans Field was a great gathering point. Aye, uh, but that was playing soccer. Aye, uh, and we used to gather maybe once or twice a week. And uh, if you knew out by Carnoni Lane, uh, it's a small road where two cars don't pass. Yeah, and back then it was even worse. But yeah. Grugans Field was in a corner, uh, uh, like a ninety degree corner, and everybody come from everywhere. And there was an odd car about that time, believe it or not. Uh, yeah. And they would all come, and maybe a tractor too would because the farmer would come with the tractor, and everybody would just park on the side of the road. And you know this, <laughs> if like any kind of they join in, they would come out and join in. A big truck came at all uh, to get past. It wouldn't get past. Uh, they'd uh, have to wait till the soccer uh, game was over. Uh, so was and, it was the tractor? Was the farmers and all jumping onto the Grugans Field? Uh, and there were maybe 24 of us and we'd play it to dark at night but it never lo- seemed to get dark back uh, then uh, it never seemed to get dark uh, and then we'd I was only a nupper and they called me Mutcher I just uh, stood, I stood close to the goals looking uh, for a handy goal uh, but, you uh, just wanted to stand up and just click your hand and score eye. and then do a big run did you do a big run around the pitch after oh, the goal oh I don't know a few runs <laughs> <though, buddy. laughs> and, and, and my brother was called John was called he was called Red Pelly yeah he was of the, uh, of the is the that Brazil- how John got his that's how you got Pelly there you go and, and I, the, I often wonder that because of the Brazilian Pelly yeah. so for people and, out there that's Tony's brother John John yes. uh, he was called Pelly and yeah. then Joe Kerr was called Lato was he like an Italian I think 
he was on a Polish football a Polish maybe. Lotto, <laughs> Lotto. And Joe would have come and he'd played in his bare feet. That's yeah, true that, now. That's, that's like, true. That's Joe like, would have played in his bare feet. That's and like he'd that. been up and down that field and nobody could have got a ball off him. Uh, like. <laughs> it was, uh, they were great times. And then after the, ma- the game, maybe, and no referee. We refereed the game ourselves, but yeah. we argued and we fought. Uh, yeah. And I'll tell you, there was many an argument, there was many a fight, there was uh, goals, there was no offside, it was the uh, strongest. Did whatever. you just play on? And, and then we would have went to Joe Care's corner after that, maybe at half 11 at night, and would have sat, lay down the ditch, and would have talked maybe for another hour. There you go. And their, their parents, they knew we were safe. Yeah. They knew we were yeah. at. Yeah. And they would have danced at home about yeah. half 12 at night or whatever. And that was it. And it never seemed to get dark. And it never seemed to get dark. Uh-huh. Well, Tony, just mentioning uh, John there, do you want to just tell the people out there, you know, your own family and your structure and how many people were in your family, your mum and your dad and, 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 and how it all came about? Aye, mummy and daddy. Uh, uh, daddy was a listen muck man and my mother was reared close to where uh, the Dugans and Carnimone and uh, and then Danny 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 was uh, Danny was born in Danny was Danny was the first Danny was we believe mommy and daddy lived down in Listamuck and uh, at the start after they got married and Danny was born in Listamuck and then we moved up till Carnimone and then there was John and there was three of us and myself three of us I was the youngest three yeah, boys yeah. and um, and as I say um, there was no very little transport my father had a, a, a blue I think it was a blue Dexter tractor to do the bit of farming whatever a lot of the work had to be done manually then yeah, you know yeah. so uh, it was tough for Tony it was tough but you know we had great times uh, we had yeah. absolutely get great times and there was no there was no playstations there was no there was no television yeah. so you were out and about T- tall hours of the night. You were, nat- and, you were naturally keeping fit, just to writing about and running Great about. Great for you. Absolutely. <clears throat> you talk about young ones nowadays and you talk about the, the, what they call now in, in the early stages of when you go to play or go to a uh, club, the, the fundamentals, the, the, you know, the sk- hopping, skipping and jumping yeah, yeah. and climbing. Yeah. We'd have done that in the fields. We'd have climbed the trees. Yeah. We'd have jumped the gates. We'd have, we, yeah, we got all yeah, that. And yeah. I know now they talk about this, uh, the S&C now and the strength and conditioning. Yeah. We had no call for self yeah. condition. Well, what's your thinking on that now? You know, you know, because I looking back, I remember, you know, um, uh, I played hurling along with your good self, uh-huh. and there was a, a lot, did. a lot of the, a lot of the, the players that played hurling went on like yourself to great success in the Gaelic world as well. And do you think it was a case of just people? At, in them days, being out and about in the fresh air and throwing themselves like I remember Malik McGuigan when we were minors, the back of Dean McGlinchey Park, the wee hill. Now we were well sick and up and down. I can mind it. I, and you're running up and down, Tony. And, and well, you made the book, but I was had a wee, you know, a wee uh-huh. <laughs> guess to wear. And then you get fitter and fitter and fitter. And then you realise sometimes that maybe other teams, it's not that they're more skillful. It's just that wee bit fitter. And then in your mind, then you're going for the next stage was trying to get fit play the match and won and mm-hmm. I mean do you think now that the whole thing is more about size and scale and and uh, well the thing was but as I said to you there was more manual labor yeah back then yeah there was more physical work being done nowadays majority of young ones you know they go on till they start, they go on to university or whatever and they, there's not as much manual labor yeah and there was a lot of more Young ones then the days were out doing manual labour, whether it was in a farm at home yeah. or on the built sites or whatever. Yeah. And we were getting our strength yeah. and conditioning. There was brickies just down on muscles like so that doing all, all day. She's trying to get a tradesman now. Yeah. It's, it's hard uh, to get a, uh, a tradesman now uh, because not enough. Young ones now not, are not going on to, to serve her, yeah. their time in a yeah. trade, whatever. But as I say, back then, that's why there was no call for the strength and conditioning. Nowadays, young ones, most of the time now, as I say, they're sitting in front of a TV or a PlayStation. Peter, yeah. And they're doing absolutely nothing. They're doing no exercise. Yeah. Not. So you have to replace. You have to try to get something to replace what we were getting when yeah. we were young. Naturally, you were naturally. getting it. Naturally. So now that's, it's important for them to get some type of core work. Um, they don't need big arms to play hurling or Gaelic football. Yeah. But you need you need a strong core. Yeah. You need to have a, uh, an upper body that's fit to take tackles or whatever. So uh, it's important that from, a, I wouldn't say at a terribly young age, but at 15, 16 and 17, 18, young ones need to be getting the right type. Yeah. And you think it, uh, you just said that age there, that uh, from 15, 16, uh-huh. to, uh, that's the age it started. Do you think it's starting earlier in some clubs that there maybe young people are being pushed into train, train, and train, and train, and train, and then by the time they come to a stage when they should be at their peak, they're maybe slightly burnt out, if that makes sense? Uh, well, Paddy, I see where you come from, but in most cases, 
and and there's a lot of education now, believe it or not, in yeah, coaching. Yeah, I know when, as you say, and it was good for us, and there's, there's, there's still there's still a place and a time for that type of thing. Yeah, uh, as I say, that hard running up yeah, hills, yeah. that hard uh, long running and yeah, running. Yeah, and there's a there's a type of thing for that now. But a lot of the coaching's now done with a slitter or done with the ball, the football, yeah, yeah. and it's more enjoyable. Yeah, and they don't even know what the kids don't even know yeah. they are doing running when you're yeah. playing games and when you're doing something that you really enjoy. Joy, yeah. you could run all day. You run all day. So, so what I'm saying yeah. is, every child, you know, every day of the week should be getting some type of physical activity. You yeah. know, while that's in school or in the club, yeah. they need to be getting an urge physically. Yeah. And I think, I think that sometimes they're not getting even enough. Yeah. So, out playing, out playing the game, and out having fun. And as I say, back in our day, maybe we done a lot of running without the ball. Yeah. Uh, and there's, I'm not saying this, but. It's better for them to run with the ball, yeah, because they're enjoying themselves and yeah. they're getting the exercise. Yeah, uh, yeah, and because at the end of the day, once you have the ball, it's what you do with it, isn't it, Tony? Absolutely, and, you know, uh, and, <laughs> you and, 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 and and coaching is becoming, coaching is becoming, um, you know, it's not like years ago, Fatty, <laughs> there was maybe twenty five or thirty was turned up at the park, and there was a ball between us all, and uh, the ball was threw up, and the biggest and the strongest won it. Uh, now, uh, nowadays, is uh, more fair playing field, more fair playing field, <laughs> and you know, and and more the coaching is the, the equipment and the footballs and the slutters and everything. Everybody's getting an opportunity to yeah, play, you know. Yeah, yeah, and and it's a great thing because you can see it um, in the parish, the, the strength of the GA at the minute, and the amount of young people playing it and taking part in sport in general. Tony, it seems to be up all round, you know. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so when you come in. Uh, from your early days, uh, would it have been Mullinina School you would have went to? Tony? St. Owen's Mullinina, yes. And, uh, so tell us a wee bit about uh, St. Owen's and who was the headmaster then, and was there a teacher at it then that sort of inspired you? Or, uh, Aye, you the know? headmaster, Colm O'Neill. There you go. Down the Tubmore Road there. Yeah. Colm was a great, great, great man, and uh, uh, he was, he took the, the, the football in the school, and uh, I think he always said. I think he, he he always said that Danny was the best of the three of us. <laughs> <laughs> so so. Uh, uh, but uh, um, how did that work out? Then? I know, I know. <laughs> I, I shouldn't have said that. If Danny hears this, he can carry it away. Uh, no. But uh, no, Danny was a good player too. But then, as I say, he was only one of the three of us that went. He went on to university, Danny. Uh, then. Yeah, yeah. And uh, maybe he didn't get the, maybe the same opportunity, maybe in, in, in Belfast or whatever. But uh, oh, he'd have played a bit and he'd have played a bit of reserve football, even in his later life, you know. Yeah. I can mean, one day we were on the screen. Um, uh, we're minus numbers and we're playing a league game up at Dean Valencia Park and we were down we, de we definitely were down numbers but the, the three of us was in the full back line uh, Danny go. was in right corner I was <laughs> number three and Pelly was left uh, full back so three big cannons <laughs> just waiting don't come by us <laughs> so that was it was uh, it was uh, unbelievable the three was playing the one line but anyway uh -huh. I know it was uh, as I say Colm uh, O'Neill was a man uh, in money in the school he was a headmaster and and uh, Colm would have given us every opportunity to play the game and that's how we got that's how we got started uh, uh, and you're early um Days in, in that school, I'm sure you bonded a few lifetime friendships, and you know, and and Molinina at that time, was there people that that you did become friends with that became like friends? Absolutely. Your, you uh, know, is there anybody there that you can? Oh well, you know, again, I'm going to miss out. Na I'm going to miss out yeah, names, but yeah. you no, know, you no. Know, my class, I'm just like my class, Martin Kennedy was in my class. Martin's mm -hmm. way maybe in Australia now for those yeah. years. And you had Patty Cassidy, you had Michael Higgerty, Tina Duffy, you had so many different ones. And mm -hmm. as I say, I'm going to leave, you know, God rest, Michael, Michael McCollum's. Mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, so many ones in my class back then, and Aileen McCollum's and all. So, um, I hey, and we always, whenever we meet, we laugh and, and talk about the times we had, you know, yeah, yeah. and money in the school, yeah, you know, with yeah. great times and yeah and it's a strong school going strong to this day and, going strong and, and, and numbers are and, big, big in the school and all great. and being beside the uh and rath do center another uh center that's flying at the minute Absolutely. Tony, for the parish and and michael kelly and them doing great work great and michael work. murray and all out there and in, in the center and so whenever you went from there you went to the mighty st columns that's up to uh, and you're a uh 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 you're one of the board, is that right, of St. Collins? I'm on the, I'm on the uh, Board of Governors. Board of Governors, Mr. Board Tony Scott. Does that sound good? Does oh, that sound man, good, buddy? that sounds so uh, posh. Uh, 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 <laughs> maybe, you know this how I got up to the Board of Governors, I'll tell you a great story. 
I was going on to Davy Keynes for the paper one day. <laughs> it's only in Ballard Screen things that this happens. Go and ahead. I was coming out of Davy Keynes, <laughs> going down the steps, and I met the great fella Leo Derry. There she go. And fa- God rest him. Great J man too. Yeah. Fella Derry. And followed you around to uh, a lot of great, matches. Great, yeah. great, great man. And he said to me, Oh, Tony, is a meeting up in a uh, school on Tuesday night at half seven? I'll see you there. You didn't question Father Day. Yeah. No, you just, and yeah. I just, just he was, all like, right, Father. People should know he was a big, big man. And he was a boxer in his day, wasn't he? Oh, well, he's a good man. Uh, a good and, man. Great <laughs> man. Uh, <laughs> he was, was a motivator. Uh, a great motivator and uh, a great man and yeah. a great, a great J man. But anyway, that's what, that's what it was. Just only half, uh, half seven of C there. Yeah. So you didn't say nothing. Uh, and and, and so, I landed at the opposite comms at half seven that Tuesday night, whatever. And it was a Board of Governors meeting. And maybe 20 or 25 years later, I'm still there. Yeah, that's because you're doing a good job. Uh-huh, you're doing a good job. I wouldn't say that. You're doing buddy. a good job. Well, it's that. funny, you see this down. Um, I've talked to a few people, and, uh, you know, the power of the parish priest uh, seems to just like, because I've talked to ones and, and they've got jobs in St. Colm's and the old St. Colm's school that first come up about Father Day would just say, you're working, here's a job. And, uh-huh. and uh, as you say, Father Day, you're coming out to yourself and. I do this and uh, like he, he is a man one time stopped me in the street and, and sort of says uh, me and Fergal Wigan we should be down at the entry on this certain night and we didn't know what was going on and uh, so it ended up it was a boxing club and I think all he wanted to do was keep us off the street off the street and uh, so uh, obviously the size of me it wasn't a career I was going to be going ah, into Tony nah. you know uh, but it was dis- it was discipline it was learning it was mm. keeping fit and uh, it was them things that maybe as you said in them days Sometimes activities were to divert you, but at the same time to make you a better person, as you Absolutely. as you know, you know. And, and so the fire of the GEA, you spoke about your father, uh, God rest him, and he was he was a man that was loved the GEA. He took you to the dairy match, and so from that wee moment then. Was that the sort of kick start for you to get involved in Gaelic? Was it some columns that started your role in the in the Gaelic and hurling, or, or uh, how did it all kick about for you as I a young say, person? I would say, Paddy, again, um, getting up from home. My father was just was a, and he, my, my, my daddy always talked about the great Kerry team of the seventies, and Kerry yeah. were absolutely brilliant, yeah. a great team, and he always said, uh, name a few people from that team. Uh, a, 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 a man who still. A great, great friend of mine who I've been regular touch with own listen, yeah. own the bomber listen, bomber listen, full bomber, forward, full forward. So <coughs> giant of a man. I, I, yeah. A few years ago, I got him up to the club. Brilliant. Um, we had a, a, a function up at the club, and uh, I phoned him, and without a shot, he was up. Uh, was no bother, Tony, and he came up, and we stayed the night, and he went headed back to Kerry the next day. A, a great, great man. Um, I was lucky. I, I met him and we went to Australia in 1990. I was fortunate to be picked on the Ireland team to play Australia. And Bomber was on that uh, team too. And that's where the friendships really, really started. Amazing. And I couldn't believe it that there was Bomber listening to me playing together. Amazing. And after my father having the radio on, me all the hair in the kitchen. <laughs> In the kitchen, coming in and out, correct, and out. Yeah. correct, yeah. And as I say, no TV in the house, no, that's no electricity in the house, yeah. and that wireless give us it was like being in Crow Park. Aye. You may as well have been in Crow Park. Mayo the hair was that great accommodator, yeah, great. You book, thought yeah. you were actually at the game, yeah. And he made a even if it was a poor game, he <laughs> made it the best game in the world. <laughs> he, he was brilliant. So, so I that's how I got smacked. Just yeah. on, on the kitchen table, my father, as I say, talking about the Kerry team and all, and all, and little did he think, little did he think back then, that that Derry would won Sam Maguire and that the son would be on the team. Amazing. And 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 my firstborn Charlene was born on the fifth of September, nineteen ninety three. And we won the All Ireland in the nineteenth of September. 1993, two weeks after Charlene was Amazing. born. Amazing. And the week after that, we had Sam Maguire Cup in the Holy Rosy Chapel down there in Banner Screen for the christening. But I'm saying yes. my best memory, and I always say this, my best memory was taking the cup down 22 Kearney Lane and placing it on my daddy's knee. Amazing. Now, that, that to me is what the J... It about. came full circle, Tony. It is because he never seen me play live in his life because he was bad with arthritis uh, for a long, long time yeah. and was housebound. And just to take the cup down 22 
John Mullane and put it on his knee. I would say it was like a million pound to him. Amazing. That day what won it and I have been involved. That's amazing, amazing. And and, and 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 for for you as a memory. And Great. and and it shows you too the power of, of and sometimes the scale and size of the world we live in that your father took you, uh, sat you down, listened to the match and like time is just a blink as you know, Tony, oh. and uh there you were Bring him back. Well, as some would say in the life of Brown, the Holy Grail. You uh, brought back the Holy Grail. It is the and, Holy uh, Grail. It and is. it was the Holy Grail. Uh, and uh, so your early days then playing with balance screen. Mm -hmm. uh, I should say to people out there, Tony is uh, a balance screen man, heart, soul, and mm -hmm. all that. And uh, there's been many a rumble up and down, I'm sure, over the years with you playing uh, uh, for balance screen. But for instance, say playing minors, because uh, I remember back playing hurling with you, but hurling was kind of a new, you know, back in them days, it was new enough, Tony, wasn't it, for people out there listening, there was a few teams who had a few years more experience. Absolutely, Paddy. And uh, uh, we had a sort of a, uh, a love of the game, but maybe uh, these other teams had a newfound confidence at that time, maybe, you know, there's things that were going on that maybe weren't, but the, the, the actual love of hurling and Gaelic, what I should say to people out there now, uh, Tony was a dual player and uh, it's a word now you're not allowed to use much I think in the whole world of GA because both sides of that committed it takes a lot of time but in them days I should say to people out there it was about wearing the oak leaf jersey for this man here would I be right in saying that and it, you know, and it was important to you to, I, to do both go, go, uh, yes and going back to the hurling there Yeah, I didn't start hurling until I was nearly 16 uh, why when I was uh, well, I was starting when I was started the football, and as you say, the hurling was wasn't maybe as strong in balance screen and Seamus Doherty, amazing, and I'm sure you'll agree. Yeah. Seamus Doherty, he took the thing, he took the, he left it the thing, and he said he was going to get hurling going again, really yeah. going. Now it was going for years before, but, but what, John Splann, totally, was it John Splann? Johnny Splann, I think was. Uh, I can't remember uh, Johnny yeah, involved yeah, in it. Yeah, and yeah. Bully Brock, I think <coughs> might have been involved. There you in go. It. There you go. Might have been involved in hurling, but I can't remember those yeah. men. But Seamus Doherty is a man I do remember. Uh, me too. And he come to me and he says, Tony, would you like to give the hurling a go? And I says, of course, I'd love to, Seamus. And that's that's how I got started in hurling. I was nearly sixteen. And as I say, uh, you had Pat Joe McKenna. Great warrior. Lawrence Grugan. Yeah. Uh, God rest him. Yeah. Big hurling man. Yeah. But Seamus was a man who would have done, as I say, Pat Joe and Lawrence back then were give, give him great assistance. Definitely. But Seamus got, got, the, got the hurling going. And as you say, at them early times, Hurling was in the parish, but then, as I say, it sort of wasn't as strong as uh, Kevin Lynch's had been given, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Uh, Lav, uh, Lav, Lav, yeah. Slahne, yeah. whatever. But but then we took a lot of it. You'd know this. We took a bit of hammerings at the start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then eventually we caught up. Yeah, And I can right. remember a county final, and, and possibly it's uh, one of the biggest heartbreaks I ever got in the J. Uh. We played Kevin Lynch's. And we won them, it, we wouldn't it? correct we yeah. wouldn't have been given a chance, Barry. Yeah. We weren't given uh, the game should have been over after the people coming to the match have been saying, oh, this this will last ten minutes uh, or it'll uh, be a uh, it'll whitewash uh, really. <laughs> and we and we got a player sent off in the first few minutes that day. Yeah. First few minutes we got a player sent off. We were down to fourteen players mm -hmm. for the whole game against a team yeah. that we had no hope against. Yeah. And we led to the last puck of the game. That's so right. they got Cam Lynch has got a goal in the last yeah. puck to beat us yeah. by a point. Yeah. And that was my biggest yeah. heartbreak. I was at one of my biggest. And you played ever. absolutely out of your skin that day. I think you could man the match, did you not? You, that day? Do you know this, Paddy? I did. Uh, I, I yeah. don't know. I don't know. I don't know how I got it, but I got uh, man the match, and I can remember I was crying like a wean. Mm. And I remember the call night before they presented the the Fala Collins Cup. Uh, that's the uh, uh, that's their own man. Uh, the cup, the senior hurling championship yeah. cup, is named after the, the yeah. late Father Collins, yeah. a great man in this par yeah. prize too. And before they presented the cup to the Kevin Lynch's captain, they they they, they announced the man of the match, and I got man of the match. And I'll be honest, I went up, and the tears were running my eyes. Uh. Yeah, it was it was uh, heartbreaking. We, uh, we were brilliant that day. That day. Uh, we, we were brilliant. Uh, and it's just, but and I suppose Tony, for people out there listening, that's the the 
there's, there's a joy in that story that you come out of the match, but there's it's a cruel, it's cruel. It's guy. It, no, it's cruel on our side, and uh, and people should know that I wasn't a, like it wasn't a one off. There was a few finals over the years for there you, was, Barry, and, uh, there was. and uh, as I say, every, we were in a lumber finals. Uh, every one of them was a case of. But I remember looking back <clears throat> when I played, and uh, Pacho and Seamus um, took our minor team, and. You were saying about Don Gavin, you're right. Under 12s, they give us a bit of a thump, and under 14, under 16. But under 18, we took a different timeline on it. We got fitter and we took them on and, and beat them well. Correct, and, right. And I think it's that thing, I suppose, for people out there, and you've, you've had this a lot of times. Um, you need to win to feel as if you can win again. You know that feeling that you can, uh, just to get over the line, just to get that one. Uh, and for us uh, at absolutely. that time, that county final, um, uh, all of a sudden it went back underneath under 16s won a county final right. the same year do you know what all at, and then now you've got it that there are one in underage uh, see now you see now in the club yeah. we, we we haven't there's no issue with we haven't we have, have having great success yeah. at on the age level in yeah, Holland yeah, yeah. we're one of the most successful but unfortunately Unfortunately, we can't transfer that to senior uh, level. Why is that, Tony, do you think? You know this, Paddy? I don't know. Uh, I honestly do not know. And, <clears throat> no, and when you look at the other side of the coin, in football, we wouldn't be... You know, I, this last few years, I've been involved with a wee group of lads, 14s and 15s in the club here. That won, we won three championships. And Fair play that gave me absolutely... And we wouldn't, we wouldn't be won, we wouldn't been won on anything in the football at on the age level. Yeah. But in Hurland, we have great success uh, at 14... Uh, Five, sixteen and nine or whatever, but we just can't take it through. Uh, What's the reason? Um, I think, I honestly think, this is my honest opinion. I think lads in this club of ours at seventeen and eighteen decide one or the other. Now you talk, you touch, uh, you touch this earlier. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I'm not going to agree with you here, Paddy. No, no, and no, you'll no, be no. happy. You'll be uh, happy to know my opinion. Uh, no point uh, me being here. Oh, unless I tell my you. opinion. I, I, you're my going. opinion. But at county level, yeah. yes, I played both. As you say, yeah. I played both codes, yeah. and I played both codes for Derry. Yeah. In both hurling and football. Yeah. No, I done that for maybe six or seven years. But then, in the, in the came the early nineties. God rest Eamon Coleman came on to take the day senior football team. There was maybe six or seven us playing dual. At both codes yeah. for the county. Brian McGilligan. The, Brian McGilligan, Henry McKee, Downey. McKeever, the two Downies, uh, Henry and right. Jimmy, that's Johnny right. and Collie McGork. Yeah. There was maybe but, there was maybe seven of us playing yeah. both codes. Now Eamon did not tell us to quit County Hurland. Yeah. He never did. Yeah. Let, need, I need to make this clear. Yeah. He did not tell us to quit. But he sat us all down. He said, You know this, boys, if we really put the shoulder to the wheel here, we might be fit to push for Sam McGuire. He says, I firmly believe, he says, we have the potential mm. within this squad yeah. to honor Sam McGuire. So we all decided, we did, he didn't tell us to quit, but they all decided as a group, we'll just put everything towards the county football, mm. player club hurling, yeah. player club football, but just leave, just let, now as I say, it wasn't, it wasn't aiming or anybody told us, and we just decided, to, because it was getting harder then to keep both going. Yeah. Sunday after Sunday, maybe uh, two nights a week hurling, uh, two nights a week football yeah, for the county. Uh, it was nearly impossible. Uh, so we all decided to focus on the county football and let the county hurling, and you know this, was not right? Uh, he was right. And do you, is that something that comes up in the, your travels, that type of thing about, you know, that, there was like, you could have looked at the Derry senior uh, uh, football team that won the All Ireland and look at it as you said there was some fantastic hurlers. But did that help? You think that hurling? Well, you, you know, there's a wee bit of there's a different toughness. Is that all right to say? I, did, I didn't finish my story here. Uh, I didn't finish my story about balance screen. Yeah. You look at Slough Neil. Yeah. The success Slough Neil yeah. club has. Yeah. In all codes. Yeah. In hurling. Yeah. Komogi and foot and male football. That's right. But. But you look at that hurling and, and football team. Nearly every one of them, nearly every one of them is a dual player. There you go. And balance screen, we don't have enough dual players in both codes. And I think we have lads who decided 17 to, to pick one or the other club level. They'd be a better player in football if they were playing the dual. And they'd be better playing hurling. If they were playing dual, they'd be a better player in both codes. There's That's my opinion. Well, that's an uh, that's an interesting one, and at the end of the day, uh, it's something that uh, they're both different games for skill, for for speed, for thinking. And I would agree if, with you if you have the two of them and the two minds mixing, because I could see. I, I know people might turn this way, but I could see in certain guys like yourself and and maybe Brian McGilligan, 
there was all hurling moves going on, but there were <laughs> it was the Gaelic patch. Am I right in saying that? Correct. I, I know maybe that's a strange question to throw at you, but uh, I have always felt there's a different. Like I did run under Brian McGilling at my young age. Good people out there, you should know. Any, any, I, and for him to know this, and love, I'm you're, you're loved to tell the story, buddy. You know well. And he helped me. You look out there, and I think I was like uh, one of them rattling sheets. Uh, and uh, I remember he looked down and says. Are you all right, sir? <laughs> and, and, and all I could do, Tony, was hope that it didn't fall down. <laughs> it was, it was a fair tackle. Uh, but uh, and saying that because I suppose in hurling you were approaching the uh, uh, the slitter different, but you had to approach it different. So if you had them all them moves and you could see it, and people like yourself and Seamus and Henry Downey and, and Anne Brian the skill and Joe Brawley. Another Joe player. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. And, uh, sorry, Joe, we haven't got you and Paddy and Tony's GAA are here. Someday we might invite you on, would we, Tony? Oh, definitely. We'll definitely. Get on. <laughs> Paddy and Tony's show. We'll Welcome, definitely Joe. definitely get Joe on. <laughs> come on down, Joe, from <laughs> the Feeney Man. And Joe will come on, no doubt. <laughs> no doubt he will. And, uh, but, so, we're saying there about the dual players, which is brilliant, Tony. And uh, so, for people out there then, when we sp uh, we're speaking about the the team that you had and you pulled together but we'll go, go back a wee bit in the early days of your career with uh Derry um so your first sort of team for Derry uh in football would have been watched would that have been under 21 or the senior on the, tw on the 21 on uh, the 21 1983 yes um 1983 uh my first game was against Armagh in the first round on the, on the 21 football championship and the game was played in Blahe and and do this. We talked about the great Brenton Neely, the Brenton Kelly uh, earlier on there. Uh, uh, Mickey Morn and uh, Mickey Morn's a well-known yeah, man and uh, and, uh, and and all over a respected the country. Manager, respected player. Is that Mickey, right? Mickey was over the. Would you believe it? Mickey was over the Derry senior team at that time, and just before that, on the twenty-one match, I think. Uh, Derry were playing a challenge match against Anthem, and. They were short of players. And he said to Brent Neely, he says, do you know anybody up in your club, a, a defender or whatever, to do a corner, we're short of a player. And Brent says, I know a young lad, he's just he's doing right for screen. And and Mickey says, sure, take him along with you. And and Brent, I took me that day and I got on corner back. Yeah, like and, and, and then, as I say, the under-21 championship came on at, shortly after that. And Mickey was helping Sean O'Kane, I think I might have felt. He was a teacher in Marathelt St. Pius, or maybe head teacher in yeah. St. Pius, uh, was over the team and Mickey was with him. And we went to Blahy, but the team of three years previous to that had got to the Ireland club final at minor level. But I thought I was just there to make up the numbers. Uh -huh. I was delighted to be in the panel. Uh -huh. And uh, they called out the team in Blahy change rooms. And you know the way and them times, Paddy, uh, not maybe as or maybe not as or that's the, 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 the togs were through in the middle of the floor and the socks were through in another bag and everybody went in and grabbed and they all wanted to look well on the right sides of the togs and, and, and I wee country boy from uh, from on the screen I went in for the last pair as I say everything was counted you had 24 players 24 togs 24 socks and I got the last pair this is a true story of over my three wins of life and I took the togs and the socks and I proceeded to put them on but there was holes in the heels of the socks oh, we geez. holes in the heels of the socks but I thought what the heck oh, it's just proud put on a pair of red and white daddy socks <laughs> so team was announced team was announced Paddy and next thing I was named cornerback oh, dearly. you may as well have given me 10 million pounds <laughs> I couldn't I couldn't bloody well believe it and the next thing the 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 team talk was given and everybody burst through the door and of course me as a backward boy I went out going out last and God rest Jim McGuigan, a brother of Colman. Yeah, yeah. He was the county treasurer, yeah. loved Mahara, great, great J man. But he was going out, and he hadn't a clue who I was or whatever. But he, I was going out last. Next thing he seen me going out with the holes. And so, he says, "You boy, you boy, you come back here, come back." I says, "You can't, can't. I need to go to here. Can't. No, come back, come back." And I had to go back. And he went to another wee bag, and he gave me a spanking new pair of dirty socks. And, 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 and I had to get them on because I thought the game would be started. And I had to get on the, the new pair of dirty socks. Out I went, and that was the start of it. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. 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 And, and people should know back in them days too. Old friend, that um, 
when you said there there was 24 sets of uh, socks, th there was no such thing as people wandering around in their dairy tops because no. you didn't have them, Tony. Correct. You know, and uh, like, because, uh, which is amazing now. Brilliant to see it Like now. any sport now, oh, there's no, uh, if kids are into soccer, they can get tops, uh, they can get uh, hoodies and all. But back in them days, if you were lucky enough to be gifted one by one in some big match or something, Correct. you were, and, you know, when you come out, say, in the training field and people go, there's the county man there. Do you know what I mean? There wasn't many no, that were getting... The, and you know this, Paddy, isn't it great now? Uh, isn't it great to see our young ones? Yeah. You go down the, the, around the parish here, around the county or whatever, or around the country, and you see so many that... You know, and it's great, young ones, you know, maybe back in the day, they'd be wear, they'd wear all the sports tops, all the J tops. That's right. And, That's right. And, you know, <coughs> because it was in, the other sports were on TV and all, but now you see our young ones wearing our, uh, our J tops, or, uh, and it's, it's, it's brilliant to and, see. And it's nearly integrated into society now, Tony, where it's, I suppose, as you say, back in them days, um, as much as we loved the hurling and GA, it, it it wasn't people just didn't wear them about, and maybe to, you didn't you know you didn't feel comfortable maybe wearing Aye. them outside actual the the match day or whatever it was, and there only was a certain amount. I mean, nobody had any spare, you know. And I, I would say, Paddy, also I know maybe in them times, but also I say because we we're having little success up here in Ulster. Aye. I would say also or also counties weren't won on Sam McGuire's Aye. or you mm -hmm. know, and now. Was 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 the strength of of football in Ulster, and we, we, we're, we're not we're not we don't have to be look up to anybody in the in the other three provinces. We're as good as the greatest uh, province in Ireland, Ulster, isn't it? In the oh, championship, there's no, the doubt about there's, it. No doubt. there's no doubt about it. Absolutely and, no doubt about uh, it. And like I mean, it's something that uh, I suppose um, you're right there because going back to your early days listening to radio with your dad um, we were only hearing about certain teams won in Sam then we're only hearing about certain hurling teams won in uh, all Ireland and uh, like if you look even at hurling now and uh, you've got Limerick strong as any Good there's team. teams that have started to come out and, and as you say that takes time that takes coaching that takes belief and it takes a county united to uh. do it Tony you know and uh, but going back there and you're uh, I suppose the early days of, of, of the county, and you mentioned the great Eamon Coleman, God rest him, uh, and I know you speak highly of him all the time. And uh, I suppose what I would say is, um, when you, you've you been in a room with uh, many managers over the years, Tony, you know, and uh, we were laughing earlier on about uh, uh, how that you could be sitting and, 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 you know, the Cayman could just come right down over your hat, the side of your head or hat the table or hit the door yes. somebody would kick a ball and yes. somebody would lift the shirt up and You're right. somebody Paddy. would hit their heart and uh -huh. somebody would tap on the ground uh -huh. and, and you would hear all these feet champions yes. and to get motivated so um, give us a wee insight uh, you, you would have had many what people should know out there is uh, you represented your county you represented your province and you represented your country uh, it's like uh, um, you mentioned earlier on to your dad. I'm sure he'd been really proud of that. That's like the triple crown as such when yeah. it comes to rugby. You, you, you've achieved that and, and congratulations. So over the years, you've met many managers. Tell me a revved up manager and then tell me a cam manager you work with and then tell me a manager was very strategic and how they approached everybody. I, I, do you know this? I, you need all of that. Mm -hmm. And do you know this? We had that in that day team. Yeah. Yeah. We had that, that in the day. Yeah. Eamon Coleman was an ordinary three a man. Um was just he had that thing about getting the best of you. you know, he as a manager, I I listen my own beliefs, as a manager you have to be at the same level as the players. You have to you have to be a caring person. You have to treat every person in that panel the same. Uh, you just, you, you, as I say, you just have to be, and you have to feel that Eamon had that. Eamon was, was fit. To, Eamon, in those times, we'd have been travelling to, I remember travelling to Kerry and Cork for National League games, and it was by bus, you know, long journey. Uh. And I can remember us playing cards at the back of the bus. And when Eamon, he would have heard the coins rattling, uh, at the back of us, next thing he was down, I'm coming down to get your monies, boys, and he'd have played <laughs> cards with us. <laughs> and he would enjoy the crack with the back yeah, of the bus. Yeah, he was but part of the... He was part of them, but whenever it came to the change rooms, you knew he was boss. Mm. But but he got that respect from the players because he was 
he was, you know, he yeah. he, he was he was part of us. Uh, he didn't make himself any different from yeah, the players. Yeah. So that's why he got that res so respect. And then you're talking about the Mickey Morn. Yeah. Mickey Morn was maybe twenty years ahead of his time in coaching terms. There you go. Do you want to speak a bit about that to only for people out there? Well, and, and Mickey went on to manage and kill an all Ireland title. Yeah. So Mickey had. A, Mickey at all. Uh, Mickey at all. Uh, and, and he was Mickey, part of your, Mickey would have managed, of your team Mickey would have well. managed me too. Yeah. At but in them times with Eamon and Mickey, as I say, Mickey would have been, his coaching sessions was all, was all with the ball. Back then in the 80s and 90s that we've talked earlier, Paddy, yeah. you know, you'd have been, a lot of the been running laps of the uh, field. Uh, yeah. Running laps of the yeah, field. Yeah. You know, you'd be trying to get you sick. Uh, uh, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. That's right. A, a, that's right. A thrown session the only thing was, Muston Tony was a wee hair to run after. That's right. Sort of. <laughs> and unless you didn't get sick, some of the ones would have felt it wasn't a good session. And then if you got sick, you were, you were so, well, get up there, you know, you're not fighting. Get up there, there's nothing wrong with you. Nothing wrong with you. What are you doing last night? I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 Mickey Morn, as I say, was 20 years ahead of his time because yeah. he tactically was, wise, tactically and, wise, he was yeah. doing all this coaching with the ball. Yeah. He was pl yeah. playing the games, and yeah. you know, you know, it's all right. You know, it's all right. And I'd say this myself. You know, setting out wee cones and markers and telling wee Johnny to run from a, a green marker to a red marker the whole uh, day. Sure, there's no decision making on that uh, for wee Johnny. Yeah, yeah. You're telling Johnny where to run to. Uh, so when it comes to a game, there's no markers uh, or cones out in the field. Yeah, you're so, on your own. You have so, to. So what yeah, I'm saying is, yeah. the more wee games you play and through, the more dis decisions you have to make. Yeah. And the more decisions you become, you make, the better you'll become as a decision maker. Yeah, yeah. The better you'll become at anticipating when the ball's coming yeah. or when the slitter's coming. Yeah. And yeah. you can take that fourth step. Yeah. And so, for you, with your experience, for people out there, young people sitting listening to this, uh, and so the ball's coming. What's what's your your take on? Are you looking at when it hits the player, and you're thinking you're, that could go? You're looking, you know? Paddy, when that ball's going down onto the foot. Yeah. You're looking when that slitter's going to the to the to the boss to the hole. Yeah, yeah. And if you make the fourth step, if you make that take that first half step before your marker, no matter how slow you are, you're winning. And no matter how fast he is, yeah. you're winning. Because uh, you'll go as a, as a, you'll go to the ball as the crew flies. Yeah. And he'll not get past you. Yeah. And uh, the chances are it's about reading the game, anticipating, re knowing what's going to happen that yeah. second or two later. Yeah. And then another thing you were deadly at, old Fred, was the block. And there's many a famous block. You know, and, well, I just should say here, I remember playing hurling one time and I got a wee a stave, is that what they call it? Oh, look, look at my fingers. Uh, look at that, look at <laughs> Show look, the people out there. Look, look at that finger there. <laughs> look, look at that man. I tell you, you should have stopped picking your nose in primary school. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that, happened, that happened playing a challenge match, I think. Uh, I think, and down in Belfast. That's she was, she must have already took us down for, to play a challenge match. And I can remember, she must have advised me. You could eat made, rice for that there, man. me, whatever, the, there was a wild one today. And the slitter was hanging there, no one from the puck out paddy. <laughs> but I was a wild man every time. I I was a, I had to held the hurl of the left hand. Uh, I had went for the catch every and you're time. Great, you I'd, call her great. I loved the catch. You're a bright I love I love trying to catch her. Uh, and Jesus, I think she was even said to me before, she says, just Tony, just maybe be careful, don't put up the uh, uh, I was putting her up too often and the, <laughs> the slitter was hanging too off. And God I left her up too long the the, 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 the player anyway. He says I'd caught the first couple. He must have said something. I'll sort this man out for the sketch. <laughs> oh, and he just whatever, <laughs> whenever he came down, the next thing she was had to take me uh, <laughs> to the hospital in Belfast and the team had to finish the game. <laughs> oh, uh, God. Great, great crack. Well, so, but the way I brought it up, it happened to me one time and you might remember, but uh, you come over and says, what's wrong with you, wee Paddy? And I goes, ah. Uh, and you just come over and just look at me there and you just literally pulled it back <laughs> in. And I, like, I felt the million dollars. I did go back in. And I, so I haven't got the sort of, you know, the chopstick figure. You've done a good job. Paddy, I shouldn't have been doing that on you, you know what I mean? I could have done, uh, you know what I mean? Uh, that was uh, wrong uh, with me, but uh, at the uh, time uh, I wanted you to play on. I tell you what, Tony, <laughs> it done me no harm. And see for all the people out there, you know, I suppose now there's, there's like blood sports. And, uh, you remember, Blood sports in the old days was um, how bad are you bleeding? Could we wrap this up uh, that you can barely breathe? Or you're, right. or you're, is, am I right? That's that right. Your, your face turns purple and uh, get back out in that pitch. And, no uh, way. <laughs> so Don't you, be coming off. <laughs> we only have 16 players right. and it's a full back we have left here forward. But, and so you look back in them days, I suppose, 
and you are a warrior yourself. And them old, uh, you, you mentioned uh, the great Kerry teams and all. Back in the days of them, them guys were playing, um, you know, they had utmost respect to what happened on the field, stayed on the field sort of attitude, as you Absolutely. know. Absolutely. And um, uh, as much as certain counties devour each other, uh, we've got a neighbour county that uh, I suppose over the years has been uh, a big battleground for you, what should be County Tyrone. Uh, and then absolutely. Ulster's close enough, Tony, so everybody's close. So, and then early days, you've seen people, like we were saying there, but they've been busted and you know, their blood run out of them and they've been on and they maybe scored flat out. Uh-huh. Whereas now, I suppose, everything is so health and safety wise. Uh, you couldn't pull a wee spray in there, no, you know. You, you know. Uh, I that. mean, I took a man from St. Columns one day to Dr. Harkin and Dr. Harkin told him to look at me and uh, he just looked at him and he pulled it back in the place. He tipped it up and he says, you won't be picking your nose for a wee in a day. But other than that, get back on the pitch. I know. So that, that's a doctor. And that's true story, Tony. And, uh, so, uh, going back. So you played then, say the likes of uh, people should know um, and... Uh, We'll go on to say the likes of the uh, the Ulster finals that you would have uh, played in and the early days, I suppose, of one in an Ulster final and then, as you said there, the belief that you could go on uh-huh. and won an uh-huh. All-Ireland. Uh, for people out there, and you, 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 you totally respected the rest of the counties in, uh, in Ulster at the minute that there is some great teams in Ulster Absolutely. at the minute and uh, there's some great teams that uh, have won All-Irelands in Ulster and you have battled with some of the greatest players in Ulster over the years and I suppose we'll get a wee insight into that now when the likes of, say, the Railway Cup team that mm-hmm. you would have played mm-hmm. with and uh, the people that would have been involved Absolutely. in that and uh, the what people should know out there is uh, when you play uh, in your club was one thing, uh, you're picked in your county it's the next level. You get up then to the Railway Cup, which is a, another level, and then you, you play for your country. It's like, you know, if Tony Scullion was a soccer player, he would be Lionel Messi or Ronaldo. <laughs> for you people out there that love soccer, and the man did say he played soccer, and there's a few uh, uh, Italian and Polish players That's from it. the Five Mile Straight that didn't just get the big <laughs> mega deals no, like Messi and Ronaldo. <laughs> 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 but they should have done. And, uh, but, and, and just sort of, uh, just for Shoot on. Like you talked about your uh, um, your your brother uh, Danny. Danny is the head of the credit union in the town. A great establishment uh, for people out there in the community. I thought I would just mention my head. So Tony, the Railway Cup uh, was it Joe Kernan uh, was managing the team at that. No, who the, was managing? The, Brian McEnough. Brian McEnough. Uh, and should say to people, Brian McEnough was a Donegal man who led Donegal to. Uh, uh, well, I and I can't forget Art McCrory. Of a true old man. Them two men were, and Brain and Art were the two men who took the Rilba Cup team. And um, it was a great honour, quite yeah. honestly, Paddy. I, play, I think it was, I think I played for maybe 10 years, <coughs> I won six Rilba Cup medals in a row. Amazing. And I don't think, I don't think it was ever, there was six ever won and maybe in a row before. Um, I think the great Sean O'Neill, uh, was it, you know, your man from Cork, Jimmy Jimmy Barry Murphy, well, might have seven eight Railway Cup medals, but I don't think it was ever Christy anybody. Ring. Myself and Christy Ring. Christy Ring. I know what I'd say on behalf of that. Christy Ring got a statue built for him because he won that. No, so I'm no, sending no. the message out now. No, no, no. no. no uh, no, see, no. you know that too. So Christy Ring was a fantastic hurler, a great inspiration, uh, uh, had skills beyond other people at, oh, at his great, day. great, great Was player. able to pick great. it up like, like a feather. And, and he had that Chevy. Unbelievable. And, uh, Unbelievable. So he had the Brent Neely Chevy. He had. He had. And uh, a very a strong play, played into his late 40s. Yeah, a long that right? on, on his 40s is right. Well, his right? 40s. Uh, and uh, so there was a statue in Cork. <laughs> I can't Remember, nah. I'm, go- I'm not going to say where the town is because I'll probably name a town Tony totally be the wrong county. And somebody's <laughs> going to come on and say, Jesus, that boy doesn't know nah. that. <laughs> that that boy knows nothing about the GA yeah. history. He's just making it up as he goes along. But people out there, I think we should start a campaign for the Tony Scullion uh, <laughs> a statue for the amount of Railway Cups. And so let people know into that what it was, was you played each other's provinces. Isn't that right, Tony? Yes, you played the four provinces played each other. And... Um, uh, uh, for a few years, it was it was run over the same weekend, and that was a great it was a great event because you played your semi final on a Saturday. Yeah, we all stayed together in the same hotel on a Saturday uh, night, which uh, was uh, which was, was good was crack. There, was there a few weeks then, Well, if you if you lost your semi final, there was there was more we <laughs> double <left>. stouts. <laughs> uh, if you won the semi final, which we were always very proud to do, yeah. Or also, uh, yeah. and I and we then would was looked after ourselves for the game on Sunday. Railway Cup was brilliant. I'd be appealing, and I would always said this, should never have died the Railway Cup. Uh, um, to me, it was, uh, 
it was the start of all the teams winning uh, Sam Maguire's. Uh, I won my first Real World Cup medal in 1988 or 89. Yeah. And I, as I say, I got. 40 and to get six in a row. But you had National Leagues won at that I, time. I, I, had, I, I won, th- no, I won, my, I won three National League, 92, 95, 96, yeah. won three yeah. National League titles. But, but um, when you think about that Railway Cup and it started in 88, 89, ran through for six years, the three Ds won Sam Maguire's, the four, the three Ds won four Sam Maguire's down in 91, yeah. Donegal in 92, Day in 93, and down again in 94. Yeah, yeah. And that was in the same period of time yeah. that Ulster teams were winning Railway Cups. And I really do believe that gave us belief, belief that we could go and play the best in Leinster and yeah. Monster and Connacht yeah. and be successful. And the Railway Cup back then, Paddy, it was hard. It, it was hard. To, to, you need to it's, explain to some of the people. It, it was it, a hard hitting, uh, hard you know. hitting, great honest football. A lot of people loved the Rural Cup, and you know it was a great honour. And to, to to and I think I must mention this man. I said myself, Martin McQuillan from Armagh. I think like myself, he mightn't have played in every minute, but he was involved in the six seasons. But uh, he's uh, another man. He would have won, won the six in a row too. So Martin did, McQuillan. Where, where do we need a wee statue on Armagh as well? We need a wee statue right. for Martin so, McQuillan. So, uh, so he, you know, see, he was involved in all six too. Yes, uh, mm, great man brilliant. too. Brilliant and 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 to, like that's, that's an amazing uh, 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 accolade to have, Tony. And also too, I suppose um, that would have given you an opportunity um, to play against the best players. And Ireland, isn't that right? Absolutely. You know, the best forwards, the best, you know, midfielders are coming so, at and you. Know. Give you I individually give you great belief. Yes. And one of the finals, Paddy, and maybe there's more, I know one of them, and, and uh, one of them was in, oh, I need to be careful here. Yeah, right. was, was in 91, <laughs> a, a week before I got married, and it was played in Crow Park, and um, we won it, and till, till, uh, to lift this, to lift the real cup on behalf of my province, and get married the following week and all and all, it was absolutely a, emotional brilliant. time. Ah, uh, great time. Uh, you've great. had a, you, uh, uh, That's the thing about uh, people should know about sport. It's as cruel as anything, and then it can be so good. Uh, Paddy, you, you, know, know, you wouldn't need to be going into sport to think you're going to win every day. Uh, but the good thing about it is, see when you do win. That's when you get. If you're winning all the time, you know, uh, you, you, you lose more than you won, and you get uh, some massive disappointments in your yeah, playing career. Yeah, massive stuff. Yeah. I could, and I don't want to recall someone be some getting beaten hard and last minutes. And as I talked uh, earlier on that yeah, Ireland final, uh, and and some of the ones we lost, but the few we won, the special. enjoyment and the memories you get out of that uh, party. Uh, is, and uh, because uh, at the end of the day, <clears throat> you're a team. And it's not about one person making no. a wrong kick, or, Correct. you know. So a lot of people are cruel and the stands and all that, but that they're not on that field. Well, they're not making the decisions like that individual has to make at that time. And you and know, that's spectators can be cruel. That's what I'm see, saying. See, when I quit playing, it was hard to go to matches mm. because, and you know, this I've had to do this now. When I go to a match now, whether it's club or, or county, but it's hard for county, I like to go. And a spot for myself uh, to watch the match uh, because I remember going to start after a, qu- a quit into the crowd and the criticism that players were getting uh, out in the field. Now, I don't stand for that. No, I and know that. Because I know every player out there is doing their best. Yeah. And you're up against a direct opponent who's playing for the county also. So uh, they're a good uh, player uh, when they're selected. Uh, so somebody's going to win on that day. Yeah. First of all, some team's going to win. And second of all, that individual battle, somebody's going to come out on top in that yeah, individual. Yeah. And you're not going to come out on no. top in every individual no, battle. No. And sometimes I think the spectators, and yes, they're great people to come into the match and all that and paying to watch the games and all that. But I think they can be a wee bit cruel on the players out there because uh, them people, ha- them players have to get up in the morrow morning and go to their day's work and all yeah, that. So, yeah. so they're giving us a lot of enjoyment and yeah. ent- ent- entertainment. And effort. And, and that's something, I suppose, just to kick in that there, what you're saying, um, they're giving us a lot of enjoyment and entertainment. Uh, I know that uh, you are a GAA uh, uh, individual that's passionate about the way it's set up, um, y- yes. the way it's structured, yes. um, and how it's structured, yes. and that it's about community, it's about people, it's about sport, it's about uh, fitness, it's about celebrations and, and sad Absolutely. times. But this thing coming up now about, like, there's... Um, uh, 
should players be paid and should players and at a level uh, should they get support for I don't know like say their their petrol or their travel or uh, to me when you uh, put things into like a professional realm you nearly leave it that Tony uh, the uh, the tiger from Derry uh, can be lifted and all of a sudden Tony the tiger is playing and uh, uh, Nemo Crooks or somebody and he's playing for Kerry or he's playing for Dublin or, uh, you know, what is your thinking? Do you think it's, uh, we're at a place where it's good, what it's like? Or are we at a place where it's changing, Tony, for what you've seen in the years that you grew up? Do you know what I mean by that? Because it's hard for every club to keep going, what I'm saying, and, and it'd be hard for them to lose players. Uh, for some players to be, how long do you get paid for? If you get an injury, what happens? You know, all these things, Tony. Uh, or should we stay the way we are? Paddy, it's, it, that's a great question. And, and you know, um, <coughs> you know I, I'm not, I know how much effort, lads, but uh, boys and girls, huh, uh, in all codes, because the Liddy's football, the Camogie and all is absolutely, the level's, the level's there again. That's Joe Brawley. Uh, uh, I'll uh, answer, uh, Tony. Say, Joe, you want on? Uh, 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 hey, Joe. Sorry. Yeah, Joe. Sorry, I should have turned off my phone. Oh, anyway. yeah, mine's on, too. Don't uh, worry about it. So, um, no, you're talking about, no, you're talking about, well, the game, uh, you know, the effort that the, 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 the put now compared to us is, is incredible and it's nearly every day of the week. But um, I don't think that, um, I think players, I think players should be treated fairly. Should be treated fairly. Never, I don't think it sh- professional. No, because there wouldn't be enough. Uh, hey, what, what's the difference? You gonna what's it, are you gonna make a difference between the club player who's put on a lot of work compared to the yeah, county that's player? What I mean. uh, because where do you start at? Yeah, where do you start? That, that's what I mean. At? That's why I said that the about club. you. You've been picked and taken away. What, what I do, <laughs> what, I, what 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 say? Any lads and girls that play the game should be. You know, the thing about the GA party, we have a great. Association, it is brilliant because, and you've seen it around this parish here. See when, see when hard times come to your door. Yeah, and hard times comes to everybody's door. Yeah. Nobody's going to miss yeah. hard times. No, but one thing about it is, the GA community will back you. Yeah, and you feel that in your your. I do. I, uh, I know. <laughs> I I well, we all lose our family members, and I yeah. of course I've lost. But my both my parents loved the long. And healthy yeah. life. Well, my father, yeah. as I say, had that. But as I say, we live in the rural part of the country. Yeah. In the parish here. Community is important. And the last mile to our house, or maybe more, two cars wouldn't get past. Mm. And whenever we, whenever times come to our, hard times come to our door, the, the J community come out and the park cars and the bus people in a mile to their house mm-hmm. and done, couldn't have done enough for us. Where would you get that? At? Uh, yeah. Where would you get that at, Paddy? No, you would. You know. So what I'm saying is, and you see it all over the country, Tony. At times, it's all over the country. Uh, it's great, and as I say, people, and and I'm gonna, I'm not gonna name, but you'll know what I'm talking about. Individuals around this parish who, who has uh, businesses going, taking stuff out to the house and all that, yeah. and I. Yeah, you can mention them if you uh, want, you know, Tony. You know, well, you know, the the Burks there. <coughs> yeah, Spurn Bakery. Spurn Bakery. Eddie Burke has been a great. Uh, Man, uh, for uh, and uh, people should know that out there. Unbelievable, uh, Tony. Unbelievable. It's well, like that man does, uh, and you know, uh, God, walk and how, how could you thank a person like that? Yeah. So good, uh, so uh, bloody well good. Silently, silently doesn't uh, want it, ma- and possibly he'll be annoyed. Uh, me mentioned this today. Well, I meet him over there. He's always trying to uh, get the lottery. But, I reckon he's won the lottery, but he hasn't but, told me. But yeah. anybody, you know, that I, I, the p- people like that, they, I love them. They deserve uh, success in life. Uh, yeah, they yeah, deserve yeah. success in life. So what I'm saying is, uh, you asked, gonna f- to, no, anybody's playing the game, we should be all looking out for each other, helping each other. If anything happens or they need help in any way even, uh, we should all be trying to help our, our people and our, our, our parish and our community. And when it comes to county level again, any boy or girl that's be able to go out there and play that level, that they should be n- not not prof- not money cross nans, but they should be treated fairly, should 
Uh, they should never be unemployed. Yeah. They should be treated in a, get yeah. a good job, a, yeah. a job that they deserve yeah. because when they should be all looked after. Very there's people well. within the GA. What you're saying there, there's there's people, and I've seen this. You're right, Tony. Um, there's people within the GA that follow the GA are looking out, and they won't see young people out of work, or they won't see uh, young ladies out of work. Correct. Attend the camogie, and that's Correct. happened all over every parish, I'd imagine. That's cr- and uh, it's not uh, so. Basically. We leave it open then on that thing. And basically what you're saying, Tony, is that uh, nobody should be uh, in a situation where they feel down and out that they can't get the support from the GAA because it's there if and it's I, needed. I, I think, Paddy, we can get better at it too. Aye, uh, aye. We are getting better aye, at it. I still, yeah. still think our, our young ones, we have to look after our young ones and we are good at it, but we even get better at it. As I say, don't know that, they get, that they're looked after and, as I say, not financially uh, whatever but treat it fairly uh, if they have get, an injury to, looked after uh, it's better and things never, like that you mean never be unemployed uh, uh, yeah. treat it fairly treat yeah. it fairly yeah. people given 24-7 yeah. put on a lot of work and giving us entertainment every Sunday or whatever yeah. we've gone out there and thousands and thousands of people you yeah. look at Crow Park yeah. you look at Learning Final Day yeah. you look at Learning Final Day the buzz, the final the day. buzz. You, you look 83,000 uh, people buzz, Tony. packed into Crow oh Park oh my god holy the god buzz. they have players out in the field giving them bl- uh, blood and sweat and people walking down going oh I hope he gets it over and all this it's, different it's accents a, and different where would you get uh, that where would you get that Pat? No and, and you know this Paddy we can go to and you can talk about the revelry we have in our clubs which uh-huh. is great healthy <laughs> revelry but at the final when the final whistle goes we can shake hands yeah. and, and um, I must say here now and as I say you know our game should be always played in the right spirit yeah. you go out there you do battle yeah. but uh, in this crack of Talking to our opponents or uh, um, nonsense off the ball, uh, uh, getting inside their heads. Completely uh, rude. Uh, that should be swiped <coughs> out of our games. Yeah, yeah, There's no yeah. room for that on yeah, our games. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but as I say, was there much of that, Tony, when you were playing? No, you know, that no. Sort but of uh, <coughs> that nonsense. I, I don't know what you hear, but the some of the stuff that you hear, but here, I, hopefully, it's only few and far between. But, yeah. You know, you go out there and you do battle, as you say, Paddy. Yeah. I I could hit you could hit uh. fair and square. We we'll get up again. We we'll play it on. And we if I were hit a man shoulder to shoulder, fair and square. Uh, 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 you you had a good tank for shoulder. <laughs> I was more like an old lad. No, you, you, you were like one of the, you, like war tanks. Oh, you, you you didn't you didn't avoid that either, Paddy. You 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 won. There was no short step on you either, boy. But anyway, it was, oh, thank it, you. It was great times. Uh, great times. So the likes of uh, you know um, like the railway cups and all. Uh, um, well, people should know too is uh like you are the most uh, uh awarded uh, railway cup man but another thing you brought to this town which um um growing up is a thing of fantasy people watching uh you hear a thing called the all-stars of GA, right? And it's like, you know, it's like, this, uh, uh, if you were a Hollywood actor, Tony, you would be like at the Oscars, right? So it's like a, an Oscar ceremony. And what the All-Stars is for people out there listening is, it's, I suppose, it's a year of uh, GA uh, hurling and Gaelic, and uh, it's uh, the best players from uh, the 15 different positions that be out there on the pitch. And uh, so I'm not sure who picks him. Uh, Tony might be able to tell us that. He could be one of the secret pickers as I speak <laughs> I now. I must have been one of those uh, and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was one of them that year. I backed you five times. Mm. Uh, I was big Joe from Kerry. <laughs> mm. <laughs> but uh, so and it's a great accolade to have. And to be honest, uh, for a small parish like this, uh, to not uh, to one of the few times is even, even more so. So, Tony, do you want to talk about um, the... When you became an all star, uh, like uh, going from uh, starting uh, as uh, Messi out and and uh, and Grugans Grugans pitch, uh, uh, and you uh, come up and you listened to the All Ireland, you came through Derry, you had county finals, uh, you, you had uh, 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 Ulster cha- championships, and for Derry, and then you had uh, your Railway Cups. But the all star to me is like. Uh, there's pl- what I should say is, and I've heard it so many times, Tony, and you probably know it better than me. There's so many people out there would have deserved an all-star over the years. I don't know if you agree or not. Absolutely. Disagree. And they just, it didn't work out. And it didn't, maybe the, the, the way they pick them with different things, you have to win an all-Ireland. And maybe you pick the odd person that didn't win an all-Ireland, played great in their, in their uh, provincial championship. But uh, the year you won it, uh, so can you remember it? And what did it feel like, I suppose, for someone from uh, like Monaghan or Five Mile Street, Carnival Money, uh, to get such an accolade, you know, you never, you never, 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 Paddy, think 
that I never, 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 never thought I would get an all star, and uh, I'm not, um, I'm not like that. But you know, you're a humble man. I, I, I finished up with four. Amazing. But my first one was in 1987, and to any young one out there, my advice is. As you said already there, and we've, we've talked about that time, when I first put on my first Gary jersey, <clears throat> was 1983, when I was 21 years of age. And there's young ones now, and I, as I say, I've been involved with the young ones in the past years, la, and I see lads here, and the great, great, great lads, and they think they, they, think they have to be in the first 15 of a team. They think they have to be over and own big at on the 14 or on the 15 or on the 16 development squads. They think they have to be a county minor at on the 17 now to have any chance of making it. Hmm. I keep telling them it means nothing. The man above has given us all ability. Mm -hmm. The man above has given us all ability. That's what we want to do with it. So what I'm saying to any young one now, forget about 15s. Go out and enjoy your games. Go out and train or whatever. As I say, I wasn't even in the radar for a county player till I was 21 years of age. There you go. There was no, I wasn't even been thought of at 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. But I was you were mad teens. I would, you were steady, Tony. You I'd have done out. anything, Paddy. Yeah. I can remember, this is th true story. I was, was playing for the balance screen on the 14s. And my godmother, Alice Scullion, was getting married. And we had no transport at the house. And my mother and father, we all were invited to the wedding. Mummy and daddy and the three of us. And I can't remember because I'd be telling a lie if I told you how we got. I'm not going to do that. I'm not like that. Mm. I went, we went to the wedding. I don't know where the wedding was at. I don't, can't remember for sure where the wedding was at. But before going to the wedding, we had a game that evening on the 14 league game. And I'd said to mummy, I'm getting home for this game. And she said, Tony, you'll get home. <laughs> but in her mind, she she had no organ, she had no left to organize because she had no, well, she had no car. But she thought, when I would get to the wedding, when I would get to the reception, forget about I'd forget about the game. <laughs> well, that was a lot. I started a rumble in the reception. Did you play up? I played up and best behaved uh, and said to mommy and daddy, I had to get home. That was a promise. Maybe tears, tears and all, and a rumpus. Somebody took me home for the game. There you go. And I'd love to ask Pelly or Danny, and I must pass that. Somebody took me home for the game, and yeah. I played that night for Balance Green. Yeah. Well, that yeah. person could be out there, Tony, listening. Well, well we said out, thank you very aye, much, sir. Well, yeah. well, that's what I'm saying, Paddy. It meant, that's what it meant. Yeah. That's what it meant to me. I yeah. wasn't not, I was, <laughs> I was just making a team. I yeah. wasn't nothing special. Yeah. I was nothing special. But I just loved it. I trained, I put life and soul everything into this uh, into you uh, wanted to make it work I Tony. wanted to make it uh, you know as I said to you we all we all have skill Paddy yeah. we all have skill yeah. you wouldn't have been up at that park <laughs> or you wouldn't be up at Dean McGlinchey Park you wouldn't be involved in playing a, on a team for balance screen unless you had ability the man above has given us ability yeah. but there's more to that there's more you need more in skill yeah. to get on to that next level yeah. Yeah. you okay. need a desire you need to have a heart you need to have passion you yeah. need to have a drive about yeah. you yeah. you need to have no backwards you need to be game and, yeah. uh, and play manly be yeah. manly put yourself and, in and, and believe in yourself yeah. and no matter if you come from the rushes or not yeah. that you're as good as the next person beside you Definitely. no matter what he owns or yeah. she owns Definitely. that you're as good a person yeah. and nobody should be uh, look down on yeah. and you had to be you You looked at yourself and said yes I'm as good as that next yeah. person yeah. and you know because once for, you put on once a, you put on the gear that, you are the correct yeah. but for maybe for a stage in life Paddy um, we hadn't got that we were from the rushes yeah we weren't the same as we weren't maybe as well off as other people, yeah. and it made me maybe it made us feel a wee bit inferior. But yeah. then, thanks be to God, something clicked with me, and I said to myself, "You know this, I can be there. Uh, I yeah. can make it." Yeah, and you are you are a person for anybody looking out there, and what you've just said there, and 
anything in life. Anything, Paddy. Anything. Any, Tony, you're not just saying this for GA. You're saying God, this can this I, can be the way for anyone out I there. I tell the young ones, Paddy. Yeah. I always tell the young ones. You, the one number, the key element in any walk of life is work ethic. Mm -hmm. If you haven't got a work ethic, you have absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. School desk, mm -hmm. workplace, <coughs> sports field. Yeah. If you haven't a work ethic, mm -hmm. forget about it. Mm -hmm. Skill. I'll say it again. Everybody has that. And But if you haven't a work ethic, and I say to a young one, everybody has that work ethic inside them. Mm -hmm. Do you want to go deep to find it? Unfortunately, some players and some people help us within the workplace. Mm -hmm. They don't go that deep enough. On the school desk, we're all the same. Mm -hmm. No, everybody's the same. I was, <laughs> I left school at 16 mm -hmm. without an exam. Yeah. Without an exam. The closest thing I ever got to <laughs> a new level was a spurt level in my hand. Uh, but gee, look at so, about, so looking about what, uh, uh, what, what, uh, what, uh, what, what I'm uh, saying is, Paddy, that doesn't count for anything. Yeah. That does just because you have a heap of O levels and A levels yeah. doesn't make you out any better than yeah. anybody else. Yeah. Get out onto the working life there and yeah. show your worth. Yeah, and, and that from your early days, like your early days working with Hearns, isn't that right? Absolutely. Liber in the Bolton site. Yeah. I went I went to Brian O'Kean, uh O'Kean uh, of six towns. Yeah. And I I was serving my time as a bricklayer. And he ran out of work after maybe a year and a half and I went as a general liberal to Hernbots for maybe ten or twelve years. Mm-hmm. And um, it, it, it tightened me up. It, it was a learning, a uh, tough work, uh, Tony. Tough yeah. work. Aye. Out of my bed every morning, yeah. six o'clock. And if I didn't get out, my mother put me out of it. Aye. And a lot of people on the on the sites at them times uh, would have been uh, opponents on the GA pitch. Oh, absolutely, were all, you'd have come across the, you know, the Brackies and Aye. joiners and whatever. I'd have got the ones <coughs> going to the university Aye. too, possibly. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, yeah. but university wasn't my, as I say, the, the school desk wasn't. And you know what I'd say to young ones, don't do like me. Don't do like me. Mm -hmm. I didn't maybe didn't treat the school desk with enough respect. Yeah. I, maybe uh, I wanted to, maybe sport was big in my system and uh, I just didn't, and I would say to young ones, do your best now. And if you don't, if it doesn't work out for you, another thing, I think it was yesterday or whatever, maybe the 11 plus, uh, that's another <coughs> disaster. Yeah. Another complete disaster, yeah. picking the difference in wins at 10, 11. Yeah. And then, and then maybe I'm speaking out of turn, but then, you know, parents, children wins. <laughs> tutoring them getting that people into tutor them ways just to get that 11 plus yeah. thinking and when they get that 11 plus they think they have their child at a different <laughs> level than somebody <laughs> else <party. laughs> and that they've achieved everything <laughs> in life <laughs> I tell you this see that school up there yeah. St. Collins and yeah. Mother's Green yeah. not because I'm involved in it But that's as, as good a school as anywhere you'll get. Yeah, yeah, and 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 I think it's that homely thing, isn't it, Tony? The smaller school, smaller the more... community, smaller <coughs> homely school, uh, uh, caring a yeah, lot more. Yeah. Yes, yes, and it's, all the schools are brilliant. Yeah. But but bigger numbers, uh, you're, you're just a number. You're uh -huh. just a number in this school here. It's a more caring community, and if you need that wee bit of help and support, I think you'll get that wee bit of help and support. And there's so many diverse young children now. Absolutely, again, and, and it, you know this party. <coughs> If you, no matter what you want to be, if you look at that school there and the pupils that come out of it and what they're, what they're, known, what they're known to be. It's amazing. I, I can tell you something now. <coughs> you'll get there whatever you want in that school it's as amazing. much as maybe anywhere else. It's amazing. It's Don't amazing. have any doubt about it. <clears throat> and see there, just funny, you mentioned schools and education and things like that, Tony. And even going back to, as you say, the old days of when the hurling started, a lot of the players we'd have been playing up against would have been playing in schools and universities that would have had hurling and all these things going on. So there would have maybe had extra up games, if that makes sense, or extra players to play against. And, and whereas we would have just had the local clubs But where they... Paddy, do you know what I mean? Spot on. And, and you know this, Paddy. Sorry for... Yeah, Britain. no, you're all right. When you, you went to... And, and, and fair play, a great school. St. Pat's Maharal. Yeah, that's what I mean, yeah. The bedrock for, for football. Yeah. Uh... The bedrock for the damn great dairy teams. Yeah, that's what I mean. Uh, St. Pius, St. Yeah. Mary, St. Mary's Mara Felt, yeah. St. Pius. Yeah. But if you look at the, the St. Pius, and I don't want to make a difference in any school, but you got the St. Pius players, St. Patrick's Dungiven, given, McG McGilligan, McKeever. Tough, the tough boys. Uh, uh, you know, there was a uh, 
Guy Coleman. Yeah, different all, ones. All there was a lot of them come out with the vocational system yeah. as much as the exactly, other system. Tony, exactly. So what I'm saying is and a lot of good players. A lot of good players. So up there at their school, uh, a great man. I think I have to mention him too, Seamus Kelly. Great man. And uh, you know, there was two. <laughs> you know this? There was two subjects. There was two, two subjects that I did like at school. P. <laughs> Seamus Kelly. <laughs> and you know this, Maz. The Mickey Throne. Mickey Throne. There you go. <laughs> and I loved them two subjects. I, and and uh, people may be able to say it didn't, but I loved them two subjects. I loved uh, yeah. Maz and I loved uh, P. And they, they were great men now, them but, teachers. Uh, brilliant, brilliant. Yeah. And, and so, what I, I suppose wanted to speak about too, Tony, was in the old days, <clears throat> a championship was I'm here and I'm in an R club. I play Tony's club. Uh, Tony beats me. I'm out all, all over, right? Aye. Now, I play Tony's club. Uh, Tony beats me, but I'm still on. All right. Right. So, uh, when you won, now, I want to say this without a, a riot from the GA public coming uh, in no. at me, right? <laughs> right. So, I'm going to try and explain this the best All I can. Right. And the old days, people out there, a championship was you played in your province. Uh, for instance, Derry could have played Donegal, and Derry yes. may have won, or Donegal may have won. And once it was over, you uh, maybe just watch the rest of the championship by going and watching the other teams or hoping what way it'd go or whatever way it was, listening to the radio. But now, when you're in the championship and you get put out, uh, they call it the back door or yes, something. Yes. Uh, and yes, what I would say on it is, um, um, a way I'd look at it is, the old way was really exciting. But this way, it it feels as if it gives more teams, Tony, a better chance and maybe they get fitter. They get Some teams get stronger as the championship goes on and they don't peak to near the end and then they won it. Uh, and then people will go, ah, but uh, they were beaten in the first round. They shouldn't have been going on to win it. What's your thinking on that? Is it a good thing or uh, uh, is it... You're, you're going to be surprised, Paddy, at my answer here because uh, I'd be classing the old timer now. But uh, I would be... I think this brilliant te team's getting a second chance. Yeah, yeah. That's my honest opinion. Yeah. I think it's terrible. I know that's the way we went through it. Uh, but I think it's hard. You train all bloody well a year uh, and get it wrong for one day uh, and you're gone. Uh, I think they deserve at least, at least, and I'll, go, I'll say it again, uh, at least a second chance. A second chance. Now, once we're talking about maybe down the lane, maybe group stages. The group stages of, of, but I don't know, but group stages, maybe the top two, I don't know. But all I'm saying is, I like the, I like the second chance anyway. I I, I, I know I know in counties they still have the club geometry of complete knockout and I say it's a, it's the best way. But as I say, uh, I would like I'd like to see teams getting at least a second chance. Uh, and and uh, what you're thinking then on uh, the the likes of the there's certain counties in certain provinces like uh, that uh, the let's just say them particular counties aren't ready yet to take on, say, the big machines within yes. the province. Um, should there be another way that, uh, um, I don't want to use any words that uh, disrespect other counties here, so that would help them counties grow, let's say, by being in another format or that they get better well, chances to, I know there's 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 always breakaway cups from every right. big cup, but is it is it something that could help? Uh, because you hear people talking now, Tony, and i um, You've probably be asked the question uh, a load of time in the professional GA platforms. Uh, are there teams running away up that hill that like we talked about, and yes. they don't have to come back down to train again? Uh -huh. And there's teams down at the bottom of this uh -huh. hill trying to slip up, but the hill's mucky, and they keep you can't get, get up. They can't get up the ladder. So what? What? What do you think? Well, uh, the thing uh, about it is the GA has, has addressed that. There yeah. has been addressed that this last. I think last year was the fourth year of the touching the yeah. touching cup. Yeah. Uh, that uh, Westmeath bit Cavan in the that's final. That's right. That's right. And I think now I think that's brilliant. I yeah. think that's absolutely brilliant. You know, uh, I think the second tier uh, uh, should help those weaker counties. Now, <laughs> I w I won't entirely agree with the hurling format. Uh, I think there's five different levels uh, in hurling. Uh, I'm I'm don't not too sure should there be five. Uh, I know there should be more than two, uh, but I'm not too sure it should be five because. You know, if you're content to be one on tier five every year, um, there should be a drive to get, you know, uh, and yeah. some counties I think are happy, you know, to yeah. happy enough to stay in that tier four uh, or whatever. Yeah. You know, I want to see more Ulster counties uh, playing for the Liam McCarthy Cup. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. I want to yeah. see my own county, uh, dare I? Yeah, yeah. Uh, no reason. Yeah. No, uh, Antrim's... 
trying to get there again. Yeah. Hampton were there, yeah. and we're yeah. not learning yeah. the final. And, yeah. and I'd love to see down our I'd love to see all the counties. But in football, I say there's 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 two competitions now: the Sam McGuire and the Touching Cup. And if you're not, if you go out, and which I like, well, the thing about it, I like it, Paddy. The thing about it, the thirty-two counties and. London also yeah, and, yeah. And, and, and New York and, and New York, yeah, correct, yeah. Paddy. <laughs> every team at the chance, every county at the ch- at the start have an opportunity to play in the Sam Maguire. Yes, because if they get to the professional final, they're automatically in the Sam Maguire. Yes, no matter if they're in Division Four, <laughs> if they can get to the the, <laughs> prov- the, the provincial yeah. final, they'll get to the. So every team, but if you don't get to the provincial final and you're in Division Three or Division Four, then you go to the Touching Cup. Uh, but teams in Division One and Division Two go to the Sam Maguire, and I think it's brilliant. Yeah, absolutely brilliant yeah. because there's there's a target for every county that they want to get yeah. there. and and so and we, like we can't really. Uh, um, I suppose with every great team like yourselves and the All Ireland ninety three team, um, we're here now uh, just last year and the Derry team getting to uh, the All oh, Ireland semi final and uh, so it's like just like you spoke about there, Tony, about the teams that come from up and get up like Correct. nobody expected Derry. Yeah, nobody. And uh, you're totally right there by giving everybody that. There's proof and uh, all of a sudden, so we got there the, the um, from someone that was a. A supporter, and uh, I remember seeing yourselves uh, one time, and Macrofeltians were coming through. Uh-huh. Uh, it was a shopping centre. You had all got your suits uh-huh. on, and uh, 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 I was. If it had been now, there'd have been scullion and the thing, <laughs> 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 scullion on the back, and, <laughs> and the favel. <laughs> but uh, and uh, but you had the walk of a team. That had confidence, if that's oh, all right to say, okay, absolutely, okay, and uh, uh, because uh, uh, you're you're saying about older teams, uh, I remember uh, playing. Uh, it was the centenary year of the GAA and and Tyrone, eighty four, eighty four, Tyrone were playing Dublin and the All Ireland semi final, oh. and we were uh, 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 the hurling team. Liam Humphrey had taken at the time, and uh, the Tyrone were playing before. Uh, for us and our, um, a Frank McQuigan was playing. Uh, do you remember Frank uh, McQuigan? Great player. And, uh, great player. He was. Uh, I noticed at that time he was a player that was standing up, and he says, uh, "How did you do?" And we said, "We drew." And he says, "Oh, uh, we hope we can do as well, or whatever it was. We hope we do well." And at that day, as you know, Dublin were a hard bunch of boys, uh, and were. they give a hard. Uh, uh, onslaught to Tyrone ah. and I think that goes back Tony to that learning to go down below and then won the matches Correct. you know what I mean so Derry we're in All-Ireland semi-final what are your thoughts for Derry this year because as a man that knows a lot of teams what would you predict this year in the Ulster Championship is there going to be this year coming yeah. uh, yeah. 2023 2023 yeah and how do you think as as an ex-All-Ireland winner that Derry last year their journey and all that uh, was it a a journey you expected, Tony, or or what way did someone like you? Well, again, again, you have to give credit to the management team. Yeah, a management team came in there, led by Rory Gallagher. Yeah, and um, he laid down the, the rules and the and the guidelines, and there was a there was if you run it, yeah, you run it. Yeah, if you're on it halfway, forget about it. Uh, you had to be on uh, it. You had to be on it right way or not. Yeah. And fair play them, and the, and and the players responded. Yeah, and they liked what they seen. Yeah, and look what they delivered. Yeah, and also championship. And do you know this? We got to learn some of things. You uh, say, Gobby. Yeah, I'll tell you this. I wish we had Kieran McFall. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, he's out in America. And he wasn't home, and I hope, I hope he be home soon, uh, because to me, Kieran McFall was the driving force behind that day team for the last seven or eight years, mm-hmm. and I think he'd been some engine in Crow Park that day. We needed Scotland. an engine, didn't we? We needed an engine. Yeah, Crow Park. If you haven't got an engine in Crow Park, uh, you're in trouble uh, because there's no hiding spots in Crow Park. Uh, yeah. There's yeah. no hiding spots in Crow Park. <laughs> um, you'll be caught out if you have legs. Uh, and Kieran McFall, he has legs. Yeah. He's you, an engine. He can go back. He can go forward. He can give you that drive. And, uh, yeah. 
I said about you, no short steps. Uh, and you need you need that type of man. Yeah. And I, I hope Derry gets him uh, very shortly. Uh, that's good, Tony. And so there was a time uh, when uh, the oh, we should have mentioned uh, young uh, Benny Hearn, an uh, Arbanus Green man. I should have been mentioned. That's my. That's my. Uh, I should have been mentioned. Great. He for the a, team, yeah. What a what a man and a good model for people, yeah. A, a great, great, great. And, model. and in the All Ireland team, there was a few screen men uh, with yourself on the panel. Eamon Burns, Eamon Burns, uh, uh, um, not Shand Dermot Der O'Neill, Der O'Neill, and Don Kelly, Don Kelly, yeah. So just to let people out there know that there was a few others on Aye. that team. Jim and Burns, Dermot O'Neill, Don Kelly. There was four, Aye. four yeah. of us in that. 93 yeah. team and people forget people don't just remember that Derm O'Neill was and Don Kelly Damien McCusker yeah. was the goalkeeper yeah. Damien McCusker is a legend in yeah. goalkeepers yeah. in Derry yeah. and if anybody else Don Kelly would be number one for Derry yeah. Don Kelly was some keeper he was a great keeper great too. keeper but he was just Damien McCusker uh, come at the same uh, time uh, and you could, he just uh, couldn't replace McCusker and Derm O'Neill Fantastic! Oh, player. he was super uh, through that wall. Uh, yeah, he was yeah. game, great, great player. So, uh, so see, there's four. Uh, four I, I, I wanted to mention and, the Mayor Tony and, so people and know. Correct, Paddy and Eamon Burns. Uh, uh, fantastic! What a what uh, a legend! Uh, a skill, uh, 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 skill. The man, he scored a point one day against Down. I'll be honest with you, the Tom points Morris was there scoring one from sideline and all that, uh, and they put these up. Eamon Burns. Oh, he was. He would stand with anybody on any GA field as yeah, a forward. Yeah, he had the shimmy. Oh, he had the shimmy, uh, he had the dummy, uh, and he had the accuracy, uh, he, had, and he had everything. Great athlete. Mm. And uh, But there was a big day uh, uh, in Mahara whenever Evering came down, right? <laughs> the mighty day of the All-Ireland final. Uh, uh, you brought the, 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 the cup home, and uh, there's a... Uh, I was just asked earlier on by one of the team... Uh, um, uh, you know, Tony's coming in and I was going, yep. And uh, was Tony the man says that ha. the place was ha. Ha. the famous ha. words, right? Ha. And uh, so I think, uh, are you going to show it, Nathan? And, uh, oh, uh, God. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Right. Uh, it's us. <laughs> <laughs> Tony, I wanted to put that on, but is there any anything uh, like for for the likes of you? Is there anybody else you'd like to mention over the years that's been around the town that's been a great supporter? Like uh, uh, maybe Hitch and A, Q Peter, would you oh, be a good God. friend of Q Peter oh, in your day? God save us. Aye. What a man. Uh, do you want to tell people about, about you know, he's another boundless screen man I thought I'd bring up, uh, 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 God rest him, uh, was a, a great uh, uh, advocate for the GAA and uh, everything about it, in this parish and the county, for many years, Tony. Would you like to sort of... Well, Q McWilliams. The thing about Q... Q... You know... Everybody knows what Q McCollum has done. Where he started from as a plumber to where he finished that. Mm. But Q, as a person, was the same from the start till the finish. Yeah. Q never changed. He never changed as a person. Mm. Um, could I say Kim McCollum's was the most generous, generous person I don't know the stories, all the stories mm. but I know a few stories mm. but it'll be wrong for me even to disclose because if Q, Q, Q is looking down on us here and Q will be not too happy with me. Because uh, that was the type of Q McCollum. Yeah. There's not too many like Q McCollum. Yeah. It was all silently done. Silently done. Yeah. He looked after the community. Yeah. Yeah. He looked after our club. Yeah. He looked after players. Yeah. He looked after people that, <coughs> that are not in the limelight, people that needed help. Yeah. Yeah, God, it's wild. 
Superman. And he yeah, way, way, way do we lose Q. Uh, and but, but but an individual. Uh, it's good to mention it, Tony, because he, off the without you know, uh, I, I wanted to I mention know. because of the connection with GA no. and uh, and and the county team for a long time. And uh, well, what you're saying there is uh, that sort of goes back to what you're saying about you know uh, people being looked after, people getting work. Absolutely, isn't that right? Uh, and people being put in roles that that, that, are, that they deserve to be in. And and when obviously when you run a a large, massive, successful company, that happens naturally, silently. And it happens for the goodness of all, and uh, uh, and I think that that's something that uh, the GAA and Balance Green and further field will always remember. You know, yeah, as you say, not only done for our, our people around here, but we done for everybody. You know, that's uh, it. And what always been at the county and, matches, and, and all the county matches didn't want, didn't want no mention. No. Uh, Quietly, as you yeah, say, yeah. But, but he got some enjoyment of following it uh, on the screen. Aye, and there, aye, he got some enjoyment. Aye, that aye. was his day, great day. Aye, and aye. what just but a, as he was, he had as a supporter what you had, Tony, as a player. You know and, that. And that you was CQ. And he did know about the game. <laughs> but he didn't want, if there was a conversation going on, he didn't want even his opinion. He didn't even want to give his opinion because, as far as he was concerned, that he was thought he he thought he didn't uh, he didn't deserve to be given uh, an opinion in yeah, the game. Yeah, he, yeah. He wanted to sit back and and let uh, uh, and 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 agreed with everybody. But yeah. Hugh had a great understanding uh, in the game too. He was an but he didn't, he didn't want to be uh, on the hair. forefront. Uh, yeah. He it, just. Uh, uh, he was just. Uh, he, he, he just loved a, it. Just a great and a great person. Great person, great family. Uh, great family. Yeah, yeah. A lovely family. Yeah, there you go. Lovely uh, family. And, and, um, and, 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 your and, way and too. the children. Yeah. You couldn't meet nicer people. Yeah, that's brilliant. Yeah. That's brilliant, Tony. And here, what you are now too, is a coach yourself. You're a man of the coaching now, uh, you Aye. know, and uh, so yes. uh, and you you went up to the dark side to Rowan and took a few teams and, and whatnot. I, 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 and, uh, and so, I, I need to and I knew this. I think I'll mention Kildare Wolfstones. I uh, go ahead. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Great, yeah. great, great, great people. Yeah. Um, when I when I finished my, my playing career, I was living at the time up at Whitewater Court. Yes. Up at Straw, uh, at the time. And I got a knock at the door one night, and these two or three gentlemen from Kildress Wolftones, who are just over the mountain from us, yeah, certainly are, and County Tyrone, yeah, but our neighbours, <coughs> great neighbours, come. I'd quit just playing club football at the time, maybe 38, 39, whatever. And they said, Would you be interested in taking the team, Kildress? And I said, What? She says, We'd love to see. And, and I took the team along with a great friend of mine, Cahill Corey. A great, great friend mm -hmm. of mine, and still to this day, a great friend of mine. And uh, I spent four tremendous years there. Brilliant. And I'm, I'm going to mention another man there, a man who had the team just the, the year previous before I came. And he was a great Armagh stalwart. Played for Armagh, but had connections in Kildress, and came to play, came to manage Kildress. Kieran McGurk, God rest him, died a young man too. And... Kieran had done a year's management, hadn't played, and next thing I was asked to take the team. And before I went up the road, I made a phone call to Kieran McGurk and I said, Kieran, if you're not going to manage the team, if I'm going to, the only way I'll manage the team is you, you, if you just stay, stay and play for the team. And he stayed for four years. Did and we they? came from junior football to, see, to top of senior football Brilliant. in four years. And Kieran McGurk was a father figure to all them. We, I had a group of wee lads. Hardy boys, uh, let me tell you, uh, there's no short steps uh, in them, Paddy. Uh, and, uh, and, 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 and Kieran McGurk was the father figure. Uh, if any of them was going to, anybody put a hand on them or touch them, uh, Kieran was over the finger. Uh, babe. Uh, and uh, for four years, we had a great time in Kildare. And you loved it. You loved and it. I loved and it. is it something you, you know, uh, is there any other sort of, you know, for, you know, likes of balance screen, have you ever thought, or is there, is there teams out there you thought, or is it something you don't want to do now? Because I know you're, what people should know is you're, you're a, a GAA sports development officer, isn't that right? I am, I for, work for the uh, Ulster GAA. Ulster GAA, and uh, like you be, what people should know out there, you're uh, now passing on all you've learned 
Uh, all but the cursing on the field. So. <laughs> <laughs> I know you didn't there's curse any. No, 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 there's an odd one, maybe. No, Paddy. no, you weren't a cursor. Uh, no. no, and uh, there were certain and uh, uh, Kieran and Brian McKenna, they weren't cursors in Ballinger Green. No. They didn't curse out. Do you mind not? that? And Kieran, you could have batted Kieran, them. Kieran would never curse. And Kieran. never curse. No, never. No. And I suppose great, great, great warrior too, Kieran. Good players. And uh, so. Is there any other sort of things that, that you would like to, and you've achieved a lot, but you know, I, is, there, is, I, there, is there county thinking in your head or you any of that part, there? You, that's a great question. And I was in as a sort of selector with Damien Barton for a few years, yeah. back I mean, a years ago. Brilliant. But I wasn't, I maybe could love more hands on, you know, and uh-huh. maybe manage or whatever. I, I've managed teams, I've managed teams, uh, a few teams and uh, coached a few teams, club teams and all. And maybe people, I was lucky enough to be managed to Ireland under 17 and a half against Australia for a f- few years I <coughs> was in there <coughs> coaching the selector with Joe Kiernan and Pete McGrath with a the Ulster team t- two great uh, managers uh, too I, and um, Brian in fact and Bra- I played for Brian McEnough and then I was in with Brian and Art for a year or two before Brilliant. they had quit Brilliant. Uh, um, so and I've been with three teams around on the screen here and all so well, there's something down the line for me um, well the thing about it is Paddy the, the 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 clock doesn't stop, uh. and I'm 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 coming sixty one now, and my health I hadn't the greatest health last year for for a wee while. Uh. And, and how and are you feeling now? Then I'm after feeling that? I'm feeling a lot better, Paddy. Great and great great. I'm coming on well really now, but I don't have the same energy and maybe power in the legs, or whatever. Uh. And, well, you don't expect that, but as I say, you never see never. Uh. But um, <clears throat> I'm I was just happy to be involved with the week. A wee team balance game you know, on the 15s there the past year and with a great success. That's good. But I didn't bother with any clubs or anything I said because my work, it can be, you know, my, my colleagues will, will laugh at this here. I so, you know, but work can be fairly busy times. Uh, and, you know, yeah. you're out maybe delivering courses at night time and weekends and stuff and it's very hard to uh, put it all together. Uh, so, uh, so, nah, I'm, I, you never say never, Paddy, but as I say, it's something that you need to have plenty of energy for, you need to have plenty of passion for, you need to be in it for the right reasons. Mm-hmm. And I'll say it again, you need to be in it for the right reasons and you have to be a driver. And as I say, if there's 30 players there, every player has to be treated the same and everybody has to get the same arm around the shoulders, everybody else. So there's a lot of wee things to be to be, to be be d- done when you're involved with the team. But as I say, I'm not been, I'm taking it fairly easy at the minute. You're, you're, you're a man that's gone into the next stage, the twilight stage of life and you're calm and you're collective as you've always been <laughs> and a decent person. Well, Tony, thank you so much for coming on and chatting with me <laughs> and uh, we could chat on all night and uh, just for people out there, if you do want me and Tony to start a GA Banther uh, corner, throw in your messages and we will soon do it, won't we, Tony? We definitely will, We could just sit back and be the, the voice of the GA and all Abs- Absolutely, uh, Paddy, we'll <laughs> take her over. <laughs> so, so, thanks, Tony. Paddy, thanks Thank you, oh, and, and it's an no honour and a privilege, Paddy. And uh, you've shown me around the place here, and there's a credit to you. Oh, thank I you, talk, Tony. I talked earlier on, Paddy, about, about a driver and a and a work ethic type of boy. You have that, oh, and that's thank why you. you're doing so well. Oh, and I'm you. delighted for you, thank Paddy you, Glasgow. Tony. Thank you, you're a gentleman. And one last thing I didn't bring up was you're playing for Ireland. I read just before for the people should know this. Uh, I read somewhere. I remember when I was younger, Tony. When uh, you know the the Ireland versus Australian rules. Yes. Now I read it was absolutely brutal the way the people were hitting. You know the likes of yourselves. Is there any truth in it, or what? What? What was that experience like going to Australia and having to play their sport versus just before you go? I forgot to ask. All right. Well, you know this. Uh, you know this. I was <laughs> before I answer that question, and I says, and I'm not just saying, but I was involved in the. The coaching and other things there too. A Brilliant. few years ago, I was out in the studio with Paul Early uh, and the and the team. So I I had a I was involved with them home and away um, uh, as I say coaching selecting. Um, so um, as a player, uh, you know when you uh, you have to think you know to play for your country. Mm-hmm. That's thing. what that's what you uh, you know you you you, you might you might not even dream about that to start, uh, but the opportunity arose. Uh, and uh, I was lucky enough to be selected in 1987. And back in those times, Paddy, <coughs> the international rules between Ireland and Australia wouldn't have, done, wouldn't have happened every year. Uh, so Every ha- four years, was it, it, it Tony? It was 84. I started playing for Derry Seniors in 83, 84 National League. So the first year there was one, but I wasn't selected then. And then there might have been one in 85, but then there wasn't another one to 87. Uh, and Derry won the Ulster title in 87. That was uh, my first Ulster Senior Football Championship yeah, medal. Yeah. But, and I was... 
they, I got a, a trial to play for Ireland. And luckily enough, I got on the Ireland Brilliant. team, a panel. And so I played them. So, but there wasn't another, there wasn't another series to 1990. And with the first one being in Dublin and Ireland, uh-huh. the second one then had to be away. Uh-huh. So we were three weeks in Australia. And the same management was over the team. God rest, Eugene McGee and Sean McKeag, a great, great man from Monaghan, was over the team. And we, we got to Australia uh, for three weeks. We played for three or four weeks. It was absolutely superb. We were in different places, Melbourne, Sydney, Canberra, Perth, all over. Brilliant. And <clears throat> played three, the best of three games, three tests. And I played in every second of every game. <laughs> Fair play to you. A, a lot of players was replaced because uh, of the energy levels required, uh, but I was playing full back, <laughs> cornerback, and my energy levels wasn't required to go up the field, so I was <laughs> given jobs to do. And I played in every second of every game. And just to play for your country and to stand there and and your national anthem being played uh, uh, to play for Ireland, I'll tell you this, of those hairs in the back of my neck, the they, stud. Were, they were stunning. Uh, it was great to play. And you know this, see when you're away, when you get away from home, Paddy, Aye. I think you become more Irish. Aye. And the people <laughs> over in Australia, oh, they were... <laughs> loving they, you. They were loving us Aye. and the support we got for Aye. their matches. They, there was more Irish at the matches than Australians. That's amazing. And it was, and the way we were treated and, and the downtime we had. And, <laughs> and, 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 and the crack was, Paddy, to finish. Uh, <laughs> it was the best of three games. Yes. And Eugene McGee and Sean McKean, they said to us, big team beating everyone. Earth thinning before we went over there was incredible. Uh-huh. I was going to St. McCartan's Co- College in Monaghan and the Ulster players would thin there during the week uh-huh. and we were all given a running programme and that was running. Uh-huh. And Sean McKay would have talked to the Ulster players maybe 10 us and we ran around that McCartan's College and we had to do it in certain times and then we were got as, we went as a collective unit at the weekend to tell them more maybe an off the Jeez. whole t- team and we'd done more th- running and uh-huh. thinning. We had to be super fit for that. Because them. the Australian like, boys were professionals. They were yeah. professionals. Yeah. So it was the best of three games. So the bargain was put out. Right, man. The management says to us, he won the first two games. You can enjoy yourself last week uh-huh. because the last game will not matter. <laughs> well, the series already won. What did we do? <laughs> we won the first two games. <laughs> And we partied. Did you party, Tony? Oh, uh, partied. <laughs> we had I can't imagine a GA team. Bob were Lusson, Owen Lusson, uh, and me, Stephen O'Brien, <laughs> Keith Barr, Dublin, Paul Corner, Dublin. Every morning, <laughs> we got out of bed. We, we had our breakfast, next thing, away, down on the, the town. On the beer. And, 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 and back up again, and took our dinner, and then we put our shave and a wash, and away for the rest of the night. <laughs> it was the greatest time, Paddy. That's brilliant. It was brilliant. Well, brilliant, uh, Tony. Great time. Great, well, here, it's brilliant great. leaving that uh, on the land. Thank you very much for thank coming you, on. Paddy. And Good thank man. you, and God Go bless on. you. Really safe, safe journey away, Tony. Thank Give yourself a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you.